actually we are sorry for uh, the connectivity problem okay connectivity problem uh, the video the concentration of aluminum carbonate is the average grain size is shown decrease in carbohydrate right. The grain growth shows generally in increasing the trend with the aluminum content, which is another expected because of the multi-domain behavior of these compositions. This behavior can be contributed to greater atomic weight of the copper power. And in case of the magnetic susceptibility, the susceptibility goes on increasing up to the certain value of the copper content. Then after the one decrease. Now in case of the temperature also for the particular composition says that this is the uh, susceptibility goes on increasing and decreasing. But as temperature increases, this very uh, temperature becomes shifts towards this side, short period, short temperature side. This happens in that case. Now in this case, we observe that. The cell is found in increasing of the 20% of the proper power content and the of the The society is decreases and the temperature also shifts towards minimum value as proper as well as aluminum content increases. Now with this, I stop here. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so here, um, current day. Good day to all. Uh, we have, we had the Wait for me. So, current sir, um, whether current sir is available? Uh, no, so he is not available. So, we'll move to the uh, the next uh, oral presentation. So, the next oral presentation is OP nine. So, OP nine, uh, we will play the oral presentation. Just I will share it. Uh, um, OP9. So remember, this is the oral presentation, OP9. Good day to all of you. Stay home, stay safe. I, Dr. Ragini Dhokne, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Mahatma Phule, Arts, Commerce, and Sita Ramji Chaudhary, Science Mahavidya Level. I am presenting my articles, Structural and Dielectric Properties of Polyvinyl Alcohol, titanium dioxide dope thin film. Firstly, I thank the organizing committee of six international conference on advanced in material science by postgraduate department of physics, Rajaram, Rajaram Rao Mahavidyalaya Jat. Firstly discuss the applications of the thin film polyvinyl alcohol titanium dioxide doped film. Mostly this film used as a fuel cell also using optoelectronic device. We know that polymer thin film have a lot have a potential applications in LED sensors, chemical cells due to their vital properties. Most of the properties of poly thin film are depends on the thickness of the thin film as the various physical phenomena. Varies with the film thickness due to the interference and effectiveness of the film. The dope polymer has a different applications in industry for making of solar cell, LED, optoelectronics device, laser diode, because it of its potential application like high melting point, less coefficient, thermal expansions, high thermal conductivity, low density. Nowadays, material which improve the dielectric and structural properties are a great demand. The main goal of the present work is to achieve the enhance the dielectric properties by the incorporations in organic filler TIOT to polyvinyl alcohol. The polyvinyl alcohol TIOT composite was synthesized by using the solution casting method. Also, it is called as isothermal evaporation technique. 
to begin with the addition of 1 gram of polyvinyl alcohol with double distillation water at room temperature and stir the maximum mixture on a magnetic stirrer for getting a uniform solution. The desired quantity means how to dope the percentage of the TiO to 5%, 10%, 20% and 30% was dissolved in polyvinyl alcohol solution. The solution was stirred constantly at 50 degree temperature till becomes the forms of homogeneous solution. The obtained the homogeneous solution was poured in flat petri dish and let the evaporate at room temperature after 24 hours. The thin film composite was formed on petri dish and was removed from there after complete desire and synthesis film stored in vacuum chamber. And then after that, this film is used for ready the different characterizations. First of all, measure the thickness of the thin film. The thickness measure by using the profilometer. Prepare thin film and it lies between the 70 to 80 micro meter. By studying the dielectric modulus and impedance spectra of composite, the realization mechanism was explained. The good formations of polyvinyl alcohol tier decomposites are found by the structural analysis like XRD, FTIR, same with IDEX analysis. The study of XRD revealed the presence of both rutil and antazid TiO2 in the composite. The porous nature of the film at 30% weight percent of concentrations of TiO2 was observed as shown in figure. Also, it is observed in same the morphology of which is correlated to increase the AC conductivity is in polyvinyl alcohol doped with 30% of TiO2. The dye Observe the dielectric constant value are very at low frequency due to the sufficient realization time for the re reservoir of the charge ions with the field. While rapidly decrease at a frequency regions with concentration of TiO2 as well as with temperature. The AC conductivity also seeing increased to concentrations of the TiO2 and temperature corresponding with the dielectric losses. I skip the point of the graphical representations of the AC conductivity in this uh, presentations. Only I discuss here. The AC conductivity is also seen in increased to concentration of TiO2 and temperature correspondence with increase the dielectric losses with temperature. The peak value in M double dash spectra corresponding with the sharp decrease the plot. With frequency of normalized plot. With a normalized frequency could be well explained by the dielectric realization mechanism. The semicircular observation, the impedance plot show. And this is not the impedance plot show. Impedance plots show the bulk resistance in decreasing diameter of them with the concentrations of TI2. Decrease the bulk resistance RD. The value of the frequency expanded factor remains less than 1. The decrease with temperature follow the model and uh, Due to the enhance of dielectric and electrical performance, the thin films is most probably used for the application as a dielectric layer in transistors and in optoelectronics device. For this study, for the AC conductivity measurement, I firstly thanks for the IIT Put Mumbai for supporting for the measurement of the AC conductivity of the this thin film. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for your 
for your presentation uh, so ragini uh, dr ragini dokne uh, so for ragini dokne uh, so i'm finding ragini dokne okay please uh, unmute uh, dr ragini yeah yeah okay. good afternoon to all of you i am present ma'am uh, sushant patil is asking you uh, three questions uh, so what is the diffraction peak at nearly 20 degree uh, represents hot um please sir please uh, repeat the question so he is asking uh, diffraction peak at nearly 20 degree represents hot what it is what it actually is at the starting of the uh, it's represent the starting point of the reflection degree of the measurement no 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 what element or what crystal structure it it may be he is asking about acha in such totally amorphous in nature types okay so his next question is in eds spectrum what other peaks in between 2 to 4 kilo electron volt Uh, actually, that for the shows the uh, uh, TiO two present uh, present here in that uh, nano forms. Okay. So his third question is why oxygen content is doubled in second sample. Um, percentage of the TiO two is increases that the oxygen percentage increases. Actually, so as all the samples uh, prepared by the five percent TiO two, ten percent TiO two, means the percentage of the TiO two is increases constantly. uh-huh that's why okay okay uh, th- thank you so much uh, uh, ma'am thank you sir thank you very much presentation uh, so we are thank going to the uh, next uh, oral presentation so the next oral presentation uh, okay so i'm finding it okay uh, next oral presentation is op10 op10 uh, so we are starting it okay Hello and greetings of the day. Myself, Dr. Mahendra Sohas Kawle. I am presenting my work that is studies on improvement of mechanical stability of the network of silica coating in ICAMS 2021. That is OP number 10. So outline of my presentation is the introduction, statement of the problem, synthesis of scratch resistant and hydrophobic silica coatings. the results and discussion and conclusions so here naturally occurring lotus effect at the left hand side and artificially prepared lotus effect okay so hydrophobic coatings are as shown in the figure that is on the right hand side of my screen so typical properties are surface roughness surface chemical composition high contact angle and low stress angle in case of applications of both they are used in windshields of automobiles roof and building glasses self cleaning traffic indicators optical components anti corrosive coatings on metals production of frictional drag on shields after that naturally found scratch resistant that is hardest surface is diamond super hard materials whose hardness value exceeding 40 gigapascal we know very well that diamond has a 70 to 150 gigapascal hardness value when measured by beaker's hardness test requirements of scratch resistant coatings are opposition to plastic deformation ease of application strong bond bonding and highly compressible solids so due to that that they are used in wiperless windshields of automobiles protective coatings for optical components as well as delicate instruments anti wear coatings on metals prevention of surface properties of aesthetic appearance so these coatings are prepared with the help of solder process solder process is based on the preparation of macromolecular network through the hydrolysis and condensation of the precursor so sol is equal to precursor plus solvent plus catalyst and the diagrammatical representation of sol and gel is as shown in the diagram so this process has two process stages that is single step solgel process and two step solgel process the details are elsewhere statement of the problem the main problem with the solgel based silica coatings are first they are very fragile in nature second surface deterioration due to absorption of moisture from the surrounding atmosphere low adhesion with the surface these reasons such constraints to use of them in realistic applications the objective of present work is to transform silica coating not only in hydrophobic but also resistant to scratches 
Scratch resistance of the coatings is defined as it is the ability of coating to withstand against any kind of abrasion. It should have resistance to scratches. It should maintain the surface properties from scratches. And examples are there. Further, we have measured pencil scratch hardness of the coatings with the help of pencil scratch hardness tester as described by ASTM B3363. And at the bottom, you can have the softest pencil grade to hardness, hardest pencil grade from, it varies from 6B to 9H. Preparation of coating solution materials were used as MTMS, methyl trimethoxicillin, methanol, polymethyl, methacrylic, toluene, oxalic acid, etc. Deep coating method were used, was used, molar ratio, of MTMS, MUH, HTO optimized at 1 as to 7.04 as to 3.96 respectively, and PM may vary from 1 to 10 weight percent with 0.01 molar of an auxiliary catalyst catalyst. So the results are as indicated in the table. This is the static water drop contact angle. The contact angle is 149 degrees. This is FTIR of silica coating exhibiting different functional groups in the coating, then tail, and the conclusion. So deep coating method and solid processing provided transparent so that before we can scratch resistance silica coatings on glass. The FTIR spectrum exhibited the excellent bonding between the silica oligomers and PMMA. These coatings exhibit, exhibit resistance to pencil scratch test up to pencil B grade. So use of harmful cellulating reagents can be avoided. Such coatings are potentially suitable for various applications. These are the references and acknowledgement. Thank you. So uh, we have uh, done with this uh, oral presentation, OP10. Um, yeah, um, Dr. Kavale, we are not getting uh, got any question for you. So thank you so much. Uh, we are going to the next uh, oral presentation. So next oral presentation is OP11. So next presentation, please note that the next presentation is OP11. Okay. So I'm just uh, sharing it. Uh, please wait for a moment. Uh, OP11. Oral presentation serial number is 11. Presently, I am working as an assistant professor of physics in Government Professional College of Karnataka, India. Today, I am presenting the computational and experimental means for the estimation of the ground and its state like a moment of a solid. Outline Introduction Materials and Methods, Photophysical Properties, Results and Discussion, Conclusion and Properties. Humerates of the molecules blend into a very special family of endopyrates, widely spread in nature. They blend to a naturally occurring and synthetic oxygen entering heterocycles. They are structurally constructed by conjugated double bond framework of engineering. Their conjugated double bonds play an important role for a electronic element. They have a wide range of applications, such as fluorescent indicators, laser molecules, solar energy collectors, polarites, chemicals, and non nonlinear optical meters, as well as in the Biological and pharmaceutical applications also. Most important biological properties like corona existed components have significant role in understanding the inter charge transfer of solid in electronic excited state of the molecule. This change in electronic redistribution can result in the various other components in the electronic excited state of the molecule. Figure one shows the molecular structure of the steady molecule two and units. It is the solid blending issue was obtained from one of our research collaborate, Dr. Mahathir Shanti, to record the optical absorption and electronic chemistry spectra. The solutions were prepared by a fixed array of concentration of solid in all the studied solids. The solids used in the experimental study were of spectroscopic grade and the highest available purity received from Mr. Pen Chemicals India and were used without any further verification. Computational method. To support the experimental results, we have made DMT computations using the version 16 W software. Experimental method. The optical observation spectra of fluid PC we recorded by developing UV visual observation spectrometer. The fluorescent spectrum of fluid PC conjugated to a recorded using the 
through your closest of spectro photometer. The equations used in the estimation of the dominant edges are their components. We have used the reverse equations, versus and positive thermodynamic equations, and also grounded existing dichromos uh, equations. We also estimated the angle between the dichromos moments uh, using the equations cos phi values, and also we have used a microscopic solvent polarity parameter and the change in dichromos uh, moment equations. Photophysical properties. Photophysics is concerned with those processes which occur when light interacts with matter. Photophysical processes include scattering, absorption, and exit state of formation. The reactions of the organic molecules initiated by the absorption of radiation have always played an important role. The studies of interaction of radiation with organic molecules and subsequent changes that takes place at molecular level have received a great deal of importance for a poor many decades. The word photophysical means after de excitation process with the molecules is recorded without any alteration in the ground state. The table one shows the spectroscopic data for two MPVC molecules in different solvents. This graph shows the overlay of normalized absorption and the closest colors of the steady molecule to be seen in different solids, the absorption and emission spectrum. The table 2 shows the solvent polarity functions and solvent polarity parameter used for the estimation of the dipole moments. And this table 3 shows that the radiation statistical correlation values, dipole moments of to be seen ground and existing, change in dipole moments in debate. And the angle between the ground and the existing dipole degrees. This table four shows the DFT computational values of photophysical levels, homo, lumo, and the ground and existing, and the change in the dipole moment. Next, the figure shows that the ground state optimized molecular geometry taken from the DFT uh, computations. This slide shows that the estimate homo rupo of the steady molecules. Let's come into the conclusion. The estimated values of electronic exit state dipole moment is higher than those of in the ground and exit state dipole moments. The angle between the um, ground and exit state dipole moments is equal to zero. It depicts the direction of the solid remains, the unordered after internal charge transfer and are set to be parallel with each other. One of the other ingredients in DPK is grateful to Dr. Sanjeev R. Inamda, Professor of the Department of Physics, and the references. User for the present work. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 thanks uh, very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, for this also, uh, Dr. Indala Gondi. Uh, so we don't have any questions in the chat box for you. So uh, we are moving to the next oral presentation. So the oral presentation number is OP13. So please note that this is. A, uh, oral presentation of OP1313. Okay, I'm just sharing you. Please wait. Uh, OP13. Okay, so this is uh, shall start. Okay. Oral presentation number 13. Good afternoon, all. Myself, Dr. Supriya Shukla, I am presenting on behalf of our team from Yashwantra Mohite College of Art, Science and Commerce, Pune. The topic for oral presentation is Concentration and Temperature Dependent Structural and opti Structural Optical and Photocatalytic Properties of Molybdenum Oxide Thin Films by Ultraspray Pyrolysis Method. Various techniques like soil gel, tip coating, sputtering, hydrothermal method, spray pyrolysis, etc. have been employed by the researchers for the preparation of molybdenum oxide thin films. Longbook et al. have prepared molybdenum oxide nanoribbons for gas sensing applications. P.S. Partil et al. have used electrosynthesis method for the preparation of molybdenum oxide thin films. The method used by us is ultra spray pyrolysis method and the equipment used is Sonotech Top 5300 model. Our system uses ultrasonic atomizer. The rate flow maintained was 0.38 ml per second and the distance between the orifice and the substrate was maintained at 25 centimeters. There are a number of applications of molybdenum oxide, especially in gas sensors, photocatalyst, electrochromism, lithium ion batteries, organic photovoltaic cells, etc. The precursor used is ammonium molybdate tetrahydrate and 
0 0.05, 0 0.025 and 0 0.0125 molar solutions were prepared and thin films obtained for the temperatures 250 degrees centigrade and 350 degrees centigrade were studied. The structural changes and identification of phases was studied with the help of XRD technique. The observed XRD patterns were confirmed with the standard JCPDS card file 005-0508. Films obtained were polycrystalline with 12 defined peaks along 0 020, 0 040 and 0 060 planes as shown in the XRD diagram for 350 degrees centigrade confirming the alpha phase. The grain size varied from 53 nanometers to 65 nanometers. The, the molybdenum oxide films prepared have direct band gap and the estimated value of direct band gap varied from 2.51 electron volt to 3.01 electron volt. This increase in band gap can be attributed to partial fulfilling of the oxygen vacancies. Photocatalytic mechanism is a cheaper and easy to carry out activity with no wastage and is a green method. The photocatalytic activity for the samples was studied by performing the photocatalytic photo degradation of methylene blue. And the total reaction time was 120 minutes. For 0 0.05 con molar concentration, the degradation efficiency was 82%. Further, it reduced to 74% and 60% for 0 0.025 molar and 0 0.0125 molar concentrations. Conclusion, in this study, we have demonstrated a mild and green route for the formation of molybdenum oxide thin films by ultraspray paralysis method. Their structural, optical and visible light driven photocatalytic performance was investigated. The XRD, results of XRD and optical study showed the formation of alpha molybdenum oxide phase with nanocrystalline nature. Crystalline sample 0 0.05 molar in film showed higher photocatalytic activity. Future scope of study, we also plan to study gas sensing applications for the thin films obtained. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, um, Dr. Shukla. Uh, Shukla, are you there? Yes, uh, you are there. So I'll uh, unmute you and uh, you have one question uh, from in the chat box. Uh, Supriya Shukla? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, yes, sir. I am there. So, Sushant Patil is asking you, what was the distance between substrate to spray nozzle? 25 centimeters was the distance kept, sir. Uh, 25 centimeter. Right? Yes, sir. 25 okay. centimeter. Uh, I hope. Um, yes, right. Yes. Uh, Sushant Patil has uh, satisfied with uh, your question. Uh, answer sorry um, uh, thanks supriya uh, for joining and uh, for the for your oral presentation thank you thank you um, so we are moving towards the next oral presentation uh, the oral presentation number is op1414 okay so i'm just sharing it and uh, wait for a while uh, so the oral presentation uh, is OP14. OP14. So, okay. welcome all of you here in the sixth international conference on advanced in material science. And my oral presentation number is 14. My topic is comparative ultrasonic synthesis of quinoline, fractionalized salcones, and its absorption, distribution, metabolisms, and excretion analysis. I am Dr. Mahesh Gaidane, Assistant Professor Chemistry Department, Sri Lipti Patil Mahavidale Mandar, Maharashtra. And my co-authors are given below. Uh, my short introductions are quinoline and subtiries have used the broadly activities like uh, antibacterial biological activities, antiviralier, anti-malarial, and anti-neoplastics. Also, Chalcon gives the potential remedial importance like antifungals, antibacterials, anti-parasite, anti-cancer, antiviral, and anti-tuberculosis. Now, in a present study, the computer-assistant evolutions of 
absorption distributions metabolism and excretions of medications now the again uh, swims adams is a current and comprehensive website run by the swims foundation of bioinformatics which deliver the bioinformatics facilities and properties of the research around the world this molecular property incorporate the hydrophobicity electronic distributions and hydrogen holding appearance molecular size adaptability swims adams incorporate oil eggs assessment now that again the anticipation gastrointestinal uh, ingestions and uh, reflux prevention by the pig igo proteins furthermore study the brain blood brain barriers inflation and the cytochromes p450 cyp now uh, these are the my uh, uh, synthesis scheme uh, we studied here the comparatively by using the three methods one is a by conventional way uh, and second is by thermal reactions in the beam df4 using the ionic liquid by sonochemical reactions ionic liquid like uh, a beam df4 and these are the details of the uh, our synthesis method now these are the uh, result and discussion we confirm our so synthesized compounds are uh, made uh by using this ir spectroscopy h uh, h1 nm spectroscopy and c13 nm spectroscopy and this optimization of reaction table 1 shows the effect of different solvent by for the synthesis of 3a under the atmospheric radiations at 80 degrees celsius using the solvent catalyst solvent and the, uh, different catalyst i also show the percentage yield and table 2 uh, shows the synthesis of a uh, substitute uh, chalcons promoted by the ultrasonic radiations at 35 kilohertz now again the this table 3 shows the recycling of the ionic liquid in case of the hydrophobic ionic liquids can be recovered either by the extraction the aqueous phase with the ethyl acetate or by the evaporating the aqueous layer in the vacuum the ionic liquid that the obtain uh, was further uh, dried at 80 degrees under the reduced pressure for using the subsequent run now this the hexagonal uh, diagrammatic representation here the uh, medication similarly with the every one of the uh, where uh, volatile uh, speaking uh, to the parameter that characterize uh, bio availability medication the ideal range for the every property is uh, represented by the pink region inside the hexagonal peaks now the table 4 shows the uh, physiochemical property of the synthesized molecule 3a to j and the standard drugs again this table 5 uh, shows the drug likeness evolution of synthesis compound 3a to j using the swims adams and uh, my uh, uh, best study here the hia and triple b prediction now the brain barrier the blood brain barrier a triple b is the term used to the portray the property of the microvascular of the central nervous system cns vessels are the non stop no friend state vessels it uh, in addition contain the progression of extra properties that permit the them to the firmly manage the development of ions molecules and the cell between the blood and the cns this uh, instantly uh, limit uh, hindrance limit permit a triple bc ecs to finally uh, firmly the manage cns homeostasis which is the basis of the consider the appreciation neuron occupy the just uh, shield the cns from injury poison inflammatory and pathogen and the sickness relevant the pgp and the cyp catalyze energy in human gastrointestinal ingestions blood brain uh, barrier in france triple b uh, swims adding oil eggs taken into, uh, into the consideration assessment of the hia as a component of the situation of the small molecules uh, in the wlogp versus tpsa uh, referentially uh these are the our uh, experimental methods uh, here and uh, these are the my references using uh, for the preparation of the synthesized method and thank you uh, all of you here uh, giving me a chance for the oral presentation icms 2021 thank you all of you. yeah uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, uh, presentation um, so uh, actually mahesh gaidane so mahesh uh, Uh, I will find you. No, so you are not here. Okay, my Skyden is not there. Uh, one question is there, but yeah, as he is not here, uh, we can't take the question. Um, the next one, uh, this was the OP fourteen. 
now uh, op15 and op16 are absent so we are starting with op17 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 uh, we are uh, starting with op17 so i'll just share the screen so op17 Good day to one and all. I am oral presenter number 70, Mr. E.K. Kauri from Department of Physics, DBA of Dhyans College of Arts and Science, Solapur. The title of my presentation is Structural and Magnetic Properties of CO.1, ZN.1, Fe2O4, Ferrite and Particles, Synthesized by Chemical Co-Precipitation Method. At the outset, I wish to congratulate and thank the organizers, especially Dr. Sanjay Lettisar, HOD, Dr. Bostesar, Honorable Principal of the College, Dr. S.S. Patil sir, and the entire organizing team of 6th International Conference on Advances in Material Science Online, ICMS 2021, for giving me this opportunity to present my research work. Present work aims to understand the effect of gene substitution on structural and magnetic properties of cobalt ferrite. These are the contents. For synthesis, chemical co-precipitation group was used as it is facile, fast, and low cost. Further, by adjusting preparatory parameters, particles with narrow size distribution can be obtained. To synthesize, equimodal solutions of COCl2, ZnCl2, and FeCl3 were mixed in their stoichiometric ratio. And to this, NaOH solution was added for alkaline medium. Further, the solution was heated and homogenized. Different preparatory parameters were optimized. Temperature 70 degrees Celsius, pH 10, time of study half an hour. The chemical reactions which took place show two distinct steps, co-precipitation and ferritization. The aspirated samples were characterized by XRD and FTR for structural characterization. The chemistry peaks in XRD match with precipitous card number 22-1086 and 22-1012, which confirms the formation of spinal structure of the ferrite. These are enterprise spacing, lattice parameters, and crystallite size of the sample. Further, the FTR shows that the higher frequency absorption band lies from 500 to 600 centimeters to minus one, assigned to vibration of tetrahedral metal complex, which consists of bond between the oxygen ion and the tetrahedral site metal ion Fe3. And lower frequency absorption band corresponds to 400 to 490 centimeters to minus one, attributed to vibration of the octahedral metal complex it consists of bond between an oxygen ion and octahedral site metal ion CO2 plus. The magnetic characterization done by BSN shows hysteresis due to cobalt content in the sample. These are the values of saturation magnetization, retentivity, and coercivity. Further magnetic characterization was done by low magnetic field AC susceptometer. The pre temperature was estimated by extrapolating linear section of the curve and it is 350 degrees Celsius. And I conclude with these forms. The chemical co precipitation route has good control over the crystallite size. The small crystallite size of 6.217 nanometer of the sample is suitable for ferrous application. The gene substitution has big effect in decreasing pre temperature from 517 degrees Celsius of cobalt ferrite to 350 degrees Celsius of the sample. Lastly, I express my deep sense of gratitude towards my research guide, Professor G.S. Shani sir, HOD, Professor Aryan Munich sir, our inspiration, principal of the college, Professor V.P. Umbali sir, and my colleagues for their constant support to my research work. Lastly, I'm grateful to UCC WRO Pune for financial assistance to college teachers for undertaking minor research project. Thank you one and all. Good day. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you so much, uh, Kore sir. Uh, uh, yeah, Kore sir, we don't have any question uh, uh, for you. So yeah, uh, we will move to the next oral presentation. So the next oral presentation number is OP18. OP18. So I will just share the uh, OP18. Okay. 
18. Okay, so this is oral presentation number 18. Huh. Morning, all of you. Uh, I am respected, sir. Myself is Sajinda. I am a research scholar, Professor Rajendra Singh, the Jogaya Physical Science and Research Center, VBSU, Jhonpur. My topic is the elastic mechanical and thermophysical properties of HMO2 leaf phase compound. The outline of this topic is introduction, compression method, uh, second order elastic constant, third order elastic constant uh, uh, for structure material result conclusion a present investigation of elastic and mechanical thermophysical properties and ultrasonic uh, properties for HF, HF, HMO2 leafless compounds using Linard Jones many body interaction potential approach the secondary elastic constant are used to determine the other ultrasonic parameters we have also estimated the mechanical constant uh, young modulus per modulus shear modulus poison ratio ductility and anastropy factor in this slide, the topic is introduction. Molybdenum and its alloy are extensively used in the numerous applications since for their refrigerators, nature, and any weather, any air resistance is required to the survey environments. For the example, in coercive chemical environment like acid base and water, mainly in the nuclear power industry, zirconium the alloy is used as a container for the nuclear fuel in the light water reactor, generally for their low neutron adsorption cross section jadar mo2 uh, is unique of the jadar compound which is a very significant nuclear structure material and the cladding materials of the nuclear fuel element of this reactor in this slide the parameter is the elastic uh, constant average velocity Nature. In this slide, uh, the uh, formulas of second order elastic constant and third order of elastic constant for hexagonal structure crystal uh, and uh, six uh, mm, second order elastic constant and ten third order elastic constant. Uh, elastic constant. In this slide, elastic uh, for hexagonal structure material formulas, velocity expressions. Divide uh, in this slide, uh, divide average velocity VD. At, uh, attenuation due to the phonon phonon viscosity mechanism, equilibrium distribution of the thermal phonon in solid that distributed by the passage of ultrasound waves uh, and re establishment of the equilibrium maintained by the relaxation process. The process uh, is entropy produced with the result absorption. So, loss due to the thermoelastic relaxation. When the ultrasonic wave propagates in the crystal, there is a relaxation flow of the thermal energy from the expressed. Uh, expressed energy from the compressed towards the expand regions associated with the associated with the wave the thermal conduction between two regions of the wave causes thermo uh, elastic attenuation in this slide the second and third are elastic constant of the uh, leaf phase compound at the room temperature uh, and in this slide the uh, uh, mechanical properties uh, bulk modulus shear modulus and Poisson ratio of the leaf phase compound. In this slide, the velocity curve uh, from uh, with uh, angle uh, figure one and two, uh, velocity VL and VS1 of HFMO2 and ZRMO2 have the minimum and maximum pentalicence. And the figure three, uh, figure three of the VS2, uh, it increases uh, increases with the angle and figure 4 and figure 5 the variation of dy average velocity vd vd increases with the angle and reaches maximum at the 55 degree for the hfmo 2 and jdrmo with the angle uh, theta and the uh, figure 5 so the ultrasonic wave is supposed to the propagated along the different angle with the unique axis of the crystal the time for the re-establishment of the equilibrium the thermal phonon distribution uh, decreases with the angle and has a minimum as a 55 degree uh, based on the above conversion value of the principal equilibrium on the simple interaction potential approach remains very for the calculating higher order elastic coefficient for hexagonally structure. The far HFMO2 on the leaf phase compound tau is a found of the 55 degree at higher temperatures and uh, the mechanical behavior of HFMO2 and leaf phase compound is better than the ZRMO2 leaf phase compound. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your presentation. Uh, uh, Mr. Sachin Rai. Uh, so right now we don't have any question for you. So 
we are moving to the next oral presentation. Oral presentation number 1919, OP19. So I'm just sharing it uh, to all of you. Uh, oral presentation number. Just wait for a few seconds. So I'm just sharing. Okay, OP uh, nineteen one nine. Okay, so okay. Today I am going to present the elastic and thermal property of semiconductor nano rod. The outline of my presentation: introduction, computational method, slack drag hexagonal structure, ultrasonic velocity dy, average velocity ultrasonic attenuation in solid loss due to the thermal uh, relaxation result and conclusion. The elastic magnetic and thermal property of the graphene top reaching outside nano rods have been the study using the interaction potential model. Graphene top to nano rods hexagonal structure, the characterization feature of the elastic property of the graphene top to nano rods. Zinc oxide immediately used the mechanically stable with the help of the second order elastic constant, the elastic module, the elastic stiffness and constant, the poison ratio estimated at a room temperature or the elastic and mechanical characterization and the ultrasonic velocity of the thermal relaxation time of the nano rod and the evaluated. You will have evaluated the utilization, the evaluated value, the elastic constant and the lattice parameter which in the sum the physical constant, the orientation development, the ultrasonic velocity and the thermal relaxation time have been also the evaluated for the determine the end on isotropic behavior of the thermophysics of property of properties. The mechanical the mechanical property of the graphene top reaching oxide nano rods better than at the 6% graphene amount. The obtained the result analyze the explore the characterization of the zinc oxide nano rods. The transition metal oxide and nano structure have been the steady intensity because of their the exceptional of optoelectronic, electrical and spinotronic luminescent and magnetic property. Zinc oxide being the wind band gap, the semiconductor with the high the exciting binding energy and the potential capability of the solar application. Mm -hmm. Thin yes. film transition metal second sensor for mm -hmm. photocatalytic. Mm -hmm. photo Photocatalytic, etc. It is one of the most uh, intensity, steady, and type semiconductor. Hexagonal structure, the lattice parameter A, basal um, plane parameter, and P axial ratio C upon A. Uh, this is a, a, a parameter, basal parameter 0%, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 6%, 6%. Graphene, doping, oxide, nanometer, uh, nanorods are and P, P axial ratio is 3.24, etc. The orientation de uh, dependent ultrasonic velocity and dividable velocity. Orientation depend velocity, uh, thermal relaxation time, reference to pitching aside, temperature dependent ultrasonic motion. Part the graphene top pitching as a present steady focus the characterization uh, of graphene top pitching oxide compound using the ultrasonic method in uh, which non destructive characterization nature. Swag and track hexagonal structure. Swag uh, second order elastic constant. That track is a third order elastic constant. This is a uh, this is a swag. 6 second order elastic constant and 10, uh, 10 third order elastic constant. The ultrasonic velocity, velocity for the hexagonal structure material and the dy average velocity attenuation uh, due to form, form viscosity. 
last due to the thermal thermoelastic relaxation second uh, six, uh, six second order elastic constant and a th tenth third order elastic con uh, constant graphene uh, drop to zinc oxide this is a uh, this is a geo uh, graph zero percent graphene uh, drop to zinc oxide three percent graphene drop to oxide and six percent graphene drop to oxide Figure one to velocity VL and VS of the graphene top to zinc oxide having minima and maximum 45 with the unique axial of the crystal uh, figure three. Uh, we find the VS2 increased with angle for the unique axial. The abnormal behavior of the angle depend the velocity is due to the combined effect of second order elastic constant density. Figure 4 v, VD for central angle V theta. Uh, variation of the dy average velocity Vt with the angle mad with, uh, with the unique axial of the crystal. It's clear that the Vt increase with the angle that is the maximum at the 55 of the 55 degree of the graphene top to zinc oxide since the VT calculated using the PL, PL, PS1, PS2 for therefore the orientation variation of the PT or the orientation variation of the PL, PS1, PS2 uh, the maximum in the PT at the 45 degree e is due to the combined effect of the PL and PS1 and PS2. Figure 5 relaxation time versus angle. Figure 5 that the uh, ultrasonic wave the supported to the progressed along the different angle with the unique axial the crystal. The time of the real uh, established of the equilibrium of the thermo property So actually, uh, the sound is uh, has the problem in the conclusion. The principle established of the simple interaction potential model the remain the valid the calculator the higher order elastic coefficient the accept only the graphene dropped and uh, graphene dropped the zinc oxide nanorata elastic property of the graphene dropped zinc oxide nanorata. In plainly that the mechanical is stable for the graphene drop to the zinc oxide uh, thermal relaxation time found to the order the pico second with the defense the hexagonal structure as the tau has the smallest value angle theta 90 degree at the temperature at the time re-established the equilibrium distribution phone on will the minimum or the wave progression in the direction, the mechanical property of the 6% graphene dropped uh, zinc oxide nanorod better the order the depend the graphene material. The mechanical property of the 6% graphene dropped in uh, uh, zinc oxide nanorod and better the order other Dropped the graphene material. In graphene dropped nano rod behavior, the pure form of the 6% graphene dropped the graphene are the more the ductile demonstrated by the minimum attenuation with the 0% graphene dropped zinc oxide are the less ductile. Steady, steady can the beneficial the processing of the non-destructive variation of the non-structural graphene top to zinc oxide nanorod. There the result will provide the ground investigation measure the measure the thermophysical properties the field the graphene top to nanorod. 
thank you. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. So it was the limit of five minutes, but uh, he has uh, taken the, uh, he was in the COVID center and uh, he asked that he could not edit it. So uh, actually we have run it uh, five minutes before, uh, uh, three minutes. Uh, so yeah, we are trying to have the uh, fit with the, our timing. So, okay. So our next uh, oral presentation number is OP20. OP20, so I'm sharing uh, the screen of uh, our presentation video, OP20. Okay, start. I am going to present my research work on the topic of, of iterate dog zirconia, uh, mixed oxide nanomaterial synthesis characterization and their catalytic activity. In the recent study, the synthesis of nanomaterial is having more attention because of their environmental shape application. In the present work, easy and an efficient approach was reported for the synthesis of different concentration of iterate dog zirconia nanomaterial. For the synthesis of this nanomaterial, there are a lot of methods are available in which uh, I, we were selected soldier method because of their lot of applications uh, such as low reaction temperature, low reaction time, high purity, and other also. After the synthesis, all material were calcined at 500 degrees Celsius for four hours, and the calcium material were used for the further characterization. The characterization are using mm, XRD, same EDX and FTIR was done. The structural property investigated by XRD over two theta value in the range of 10 to 80 degree. The planes at 101, 110, 112, and 211 are indicating the presence of yttrium zirconium phase. The crystalline size also determined determine and it is below 30 nanometer for all the concentrations. After that, the surface characterization of material were investigated by using FTIR spectroscopy. The FTIR spectra show the peak at 740, 1100, 1380, and 2170 centimeter inverse due to ZRO stretching mode and ZRO ZR asymmetric stretching. And the ZRO ZR asymmetric stretching and the band present at 686 centimeter was assigned for the stretching frequency of yttria oxygen molecule. The morphology of material were investigated by using scanning electron microscope. The images shown in the poster showed that the formation of distorted spherical shape like uh, particles with some agglomeration. Further, the elemental analysis were done by using EDX and the EDX confirmed the presence of yttria oxygen and zirconia element in the synthesized uh, uh, it adopts zirconia nanomaterial and also confirmed the formation of composites by recording strong signals. After the characterization to study the catalytic performance, we were done acetylation reaction of benzyl alcohol. We did number of reactions to optimize the reaction condition and finally performed the reaction at reflux condition at 120 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes with catalyst and got excellent result. The reaction were examined using gas chromatography. At the end, we got 100% conversion and selectivity. After all this study, it is concluded that the same and EDX data confirmed the catalyst was in nano form and it is also confirmed from the XRD analysis. Acetylation of benzyl alcohol using catalyst give higher conversion as well as selectivity. The ETA drop zirconia give maximum result due to nanocrystalline size as well as purity and can be reused by simple filtration method without significant degradation of catalytic performance. So finally, there are some uh, references uh, I was reported, which I was studied during my work. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, there are no questions asked for this presentation. So we are moving to the next uh, presentation, uh, which is uh, OP21. OP21. So OP21, I, I will just uh, uh, share it. So OP21. A very good day to everyone. I'm Sandhya Jalka, and I'm presenting a paper on evaluation of mechanical properties of concrete using MWCNTs and glass fibers. The aim of research is to evaluate the mechanical properties of concrete, such as tensile strength, lecture strength, and composite strength, 
of a novel hardened cement paste reinforced with multi-walled carbon nanotubes and glass fibers. The NWCNTs act as nano-level reinforcement and glass fibers act as micro-level reinforcement. This is the flow chart showing experimental procedures wherein we are mixing the cement with MWCNTs and glass fibers. Then the mixing procedure is carried out by ultrasonic sonicator for dispersion and mixing. Then we are casting the beams and curing them in water. Then we carry out three-point bending test and the composite strength test by compression testing machine. The percentage of MWCNTs was fixed as 0.75% by studying the previous studies and the percentage of glass fibers was fixed as 0.25% by carrying out the three-point flexural bending test. MWCNTs were dispersed in the water by ultrasonic method and the glass fibers were first immersed in the water and then they were separated by using a stirring rod and 0.25% of glass fibers by weight of cement was added to cement and mixed manually by a desired water content. Then the cues were called cast of 20 by 20 by 80 mm. Then a three-point flexural test on these beams were carried out to compare the flexural cement beams and composite beams. Later, composite test was also carried out on the composite cubes to check the composite strength, toughness, and ductility. So this is the flow chart which is going to show us what percentage of MWCNTs and what percentage of glass fibers we are using in the cement. So these are the results. In accordance with the expectations, the load deflection behavior showed that there was a remarkable increase in both flexural strength and toughness due to addition of nanoparticles that behave differently. The load carrying capacity was enhanced by about 21% by the addition of 0.75% of MWCNTs to the cement paste. It was found to increase by 49% and as expected, the composites containing both of them increased the load carrying capacity by 82% with respect to the control specimens. With the addition of nanoparticles, the toughness represented by the area under the load deflection curve of the composite beams, and it was increased up to a tune of 46 Hz and 152% as evident from the load deflection curves. A significant increase in the tensile and textural strength of the composite is observed and considerable increase in toughness of the composite is obtained. These are the SEM images we have got by mixing the NWCNTs and glass fibers. So this is the SEM image of cement paste modified with NWCNTs with the cement. The strong van der Waals forces lead to strong bonds between the cement matrix and NWCNTs. The structure of NWCNTs as seen in the EDX analysis, the formation of carboxy groups on the surface might have improved the bonding by inducing chemical reactions with hydraulic cementitious materials. The carboxy groups in MWCNTs reacted with the CSN gel, improving the bonding strength between the MWCNTs and the matrix. So this is a SCM image of cement paste modified with MWCNTs nanoparticles. And this is a SCM image showing the hardened cement paste modified with glass fibers. SCM cement uh, showing the hardened cement paste modified with MWCNTs and glass fibers. The maximum deflection was found to be 0.5 mm with a maximum load of 500 newton. The flexural strength was observed to be 1,000 to 50.5 newton per millimeter square. And the flexural modulus as per deflection criteria is 35.94 newton per millimeter square, which is 10 to 20% more than that obtained of PC plus MWCNTs and PC plus glass fibers. The composite strength of PC plus 0.75 MWCNTs plus 0.25% Glass fibers was found to be 65 newton per millimeter square, which is greater than the plain cement and plain cement plus MWCNTs. These are the references which we have uh, gathered for the paper. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for your presentation, Sandhya Jagadar. Uh, is Sandhya is there? Sandhya Jagadar is there, but yeah, there is no question asked for you. Uh, Anything question has to be sent in the uh, in the presentation uh, chat box. Okay. Shuba is uh, uh, raising the hand, but I don't know why she is raising the hand. But okay, uh, I'll say the next uh, oral presentation. Uh,
Radhika Deshmukh, OP22, OP22. Okay, so I'm just sharing it, OP22. Okay, so OP22. And all, I am Dr. Radhika Deshmukh, Assistant Professor, Sri Shivaji Science College, Amravati. First of all, I am thankful to the organizer for organizing this conference, ICAMS 2021. Today, I am going to present here research article on study of properties, synthesis, characterization of nanocrystalline spinal ferrites. In content, we have to see extract, introduction, types of ferrites, synthesis of ferrites, classification of ferrites, and application of ferrites. First of all, we see about the abstract. Ferrite research in this modern age is rapidly growing. This paper is meant to make this field better understood. As electronic technologies have evolved rapidly and development of telecommunication also increased, ferrite is one of these components of high performance microwave absorber composites has attracted considerably attention. In this article, we try to focus on comparing the different routes of synthesis, magnetism and ferrite characterization. It presents ferrites briefly and includes spinals and hexagonal ferrites, different types of ferrites, different methods and different applications of ferrites as energy storing devices. In introduction, we try to focus on the uh, previous theory related to provide uh, ferrites and also classification of ferrites. There are two types of ferrites depending upon its crystal structure and depending upon the magnetic field. The classification according to magnetic field is soft ferrite and hard ferrite. And on the basis of crystal structure, ferrites are classified into spinal ferrite, hexagonal ferrite, garnet ferrite, orthoferrites, then the spinal ferrite further divided into normal spinal, inverse spinal, and random spinal. Hexagonal ferrites are M type, Y type, W, X, U, and Z type. In this way, there are the different types of ferrites. This is the spinal ferrite and its crystalline structure. There are different methods for synthesis of ferrites that are, we explain in this paper, that is hydrothermal, then the soil gel method, precipitation method, and solvothermal methods. We focus and explain every method. In my research, I try to explain the synthesis of ferrite sample. The sample we selected here is Mg Li Fe2O4. We have taken its different proportion and by the centering method, we try to study this synthesis of this ferrite sample. The experimental technique is given here. The sample were prepared by the conventional double sintering ceramic technique in which oxides of carbohydrates were used as precursors. And the compositions of this NGLiFe2O4 specified molar ratio of magnesium oxide, iron oxide and lithium carbonate that were mixed and ground by weight grinding in distilled water. Mix powder were sintered at 750 Celsius for 5 hour and the atmosphere. After presentering, the obtained powder were again mixed and grinded hollow by the pellet formations. Two kinds of pellets were prepared. One was 2 inch diameter for the hydraulic cell and second 8 mm in diameter for electrical characterization. We try to study here the hydraulic as well as electrical characterization of the given sample. We also try to study here the XRD and same reports. I explain here the X-ray powder diffraction pattern for the given sample and also these are the different 
uh, structural parameters that is a given sample its lattice parameter we studied here and we also find out its x-ray density same images are also given here for the given sample in this way we try to synthesize the given sample and uh, here i want to explain the different application of ferrites ferrites having the different application in different fields radio and television field telecommunications as well as magnetic recording microwave and permanent magnet there are different application of ferrites future perspective of ferrites is given here in examining future ferrite problems in more detail and with focus on highly valuable topics ferrite researchers and engineers will continue to develop in science and technological terms so here it is necessary to discover the different ferrites and their applications in this article we compare the different routes of synthesis magnetism and ferrite characterizations we also focus on the application of ferrites as energy storing devices we discuss synthesis of polycrystalline ferrite and the lattice parameters are found to decrease with lithium substitution which was calculated surface morphology was observed by using same images and in this way we try to explain here the electrical and hydrothermal properties of the ferrites these are the references thank you uh, uh, thank you uh, ma'am for your presentation radhika deshmukh uh, uh, if uh, radhika deshmukh is there uh, please uh, unmute ma'am uh, i am unmuting you so uh, one of the uh, participant has asked a question what is mean by the x ray density radhika deshmukh dr radhika deshmukh uh, density so what is mean by the x ray density hello ha huh, what is mean by the x ray density one of the participant is asking you the question how, how much x ray density means mm -hmm. how much absorption there is mm -hmm. that is the x ray density i see okay and uh, his next question is uh, can we use ferrets for uh, memory stores hello uh, can we use ferrets for memory store ferrets for memory store for memory store can you see the chat box so that you can uh, see that maybe my pronunciation is bad can we use ferrets for memory stores one minute memory store application it is a application i think um, memory store application means i think that uh, in electronics a ferrite core is a type of magnetic core mm -hmm. and we can use it for the memory store okay okay uh, thank you we, we will entertain this much questions uh, uh, for the next uh, uh, we have the uh next oral presentation op24 op24 okay op24 i am sharing uh okay hello sir good afternoon welcome to sit in the next conference on advanced in matters my op number is 24 dr suresh meda bachcha my paper number is analysis and control comparative study by by andob and go sister by simpa jerke my abstraction is that single uh, uh, single crystal of barium tartarate and cobalt barium tartarate crystal were grown by single division sister alpeni my keyword is a single division exciting eja pgg and ds so my experimental work is showing the optimum Condition for both of barium tartarate and both over barium tartarate condition and single division density of sodium metal silicate solution is one point zero five gram per centimeter cube. Concentration of acetic acid is one molar. pH of the mixture four point two. Temperature room temperature. Concentration of barium chloride zero point one molar. 
and uh, concentrations of cobalt fluoride 0.05. Gel setting time is seven days, and pair of crystal bronze is six weeks. So external powder extraction and is the study of uh, external study uh, relevant that barium catalyst that belongs to the authorization and global barium catalyst that, that tetragonal system calculated h scale values were found to be in a good arrangement with the JSP data is a barium catalyst 26 uh, to 0 0.192 and cobalt 0 0.1 that one at uh, 1278 cobalt dopant has not changed in structure of barium of the parent sister the slight shift of xrd xrd x-ray powder diffraction analysis in this case i show the xrd here xrd of barium barium uh, data rate one molar XRD of uh, cobalt barium uh, tata rate 0.05 molar. The, the green size of undo barium tata rate is around 335.44 nanometers and cobalt barium tata rate is 4.18 4 nanometers. Here, yeah, when I do the uh, cobalt in barium tata rate, green size is the increase. In thermal analysis, EPA data of barium data rate is I have get a four stage for temperature started from 29 to 292 and end of the four is 799 to 883 degrees Celsius. And the observed percentage weight loss is the total weight loss is I have get the 46.99 percent. And calculated percentage weight loss is 49.24 percent. And loss of molecules I have shown in chart. So, TJ of the when I drop the barium, uh, I drop the cobalt in barium data rate. So, in this case, I have also get uh, four stages temperature rate for 27 to 311 to 397 to 599. The temperature of loss and the uh, observed uh, percentage loss is 41.12 percentage and calculated weight loss three and uh, 39.89 percentage and loss of the molecules is shown in a chart. But in this case, when I took the cobalt in barium tata rate, so observed weight loss is a decreases also, calculated weight loss also decreases there. Yeah. Depression scanning colorimetry, DSC. In this case, I had take the initial weight of sample was 21.697 mg. So heat rate was maintained at 10 degrees Celsius per minute. So DSC, in the DSC of the barium catalytic system, one peak I have allocated, okay, the first temperature is like 390 to 90 degrees Celsius, and onset 302 to 77 degrees Celsius, and state is a 318.6, and heat is a minus 166.3 mg. So when cobalt dope, that uh, cobalt dope in a barium pattern, I have get a two feet, and the temperature from 316 to 21 degrees Celsius, and uh, Second is a uh, three hundred and seventy three point sixty one degrees Celsius. On set is a uh, uh, on set is a uh, three uh, three sixty three point forty three degrees Celsius, and end set is a three hundred seventy eight point four degrees Celsius. So, wet uh, heat is a loss 70.82 mJ. So, conclusion is that single diffusion method is a converter for the growth of the cobalt to barium catalyst and where having 
bore over Tata resistor. The size, the green size of cobalt dope barium Tata resistor is the base than the undoped barium Tata resistor. But there is a change in, in the green size of barium Tata resistor to the cobalt doping. As a result of the cobalt doping, XLF is value shift toward low, lower single indicating increasing. Uh, uh, thanks so much because it, it was going uh, out of the uh, uh, this one uh, so we, we are stopping here uh, because we have to uh, take care of the uh, time too because it is going to be late uh, uh, we are going to the op25 op25 so op25 uh, so here op25 uh, they are sharing it now OP25. OP25. Of my presentation is growth and thermal analysis of iron and dope bismuth trisulfate crystals by gel method. This is a chemical reaction. This is the chemical reaction for iron dope bismuth trisulfide crystal that is 2 minus x BiCl3 plus x FeCl3 plus 2 H2S is equal to Bi2 minus x Fe x S3 6 HCl and in table shows optimum condition table shows the optimum conditions and various growth para process parameters various growth process parameter. The chrome crystal characterized by XRD analysis. The XRD pattern shows sharp peaks. By using Serra's formula, calculated the grain size of grown crystals is 37.66 nanometer. By, by using XRD data and compare with standard data, the D values and two theta HKL values well match. Using the relation one upon D square is equal to H square upon S square plus K square upon D square plus N square upon C square. And preferable HKL values, lattice parameter A, B, C as 9.98 angstrom. 3.97 angstrom, 13.63 angstrom, and axis are perpendicular to which shows A not equal to B not equal to C. From this, bone crystals has orthorhombic structure. Next characterization is uh, same. In photograph, particles have spherical aggregate shapes. Some microstructure appears heterogeneous and Porous. Here, the surface morphology affected due to the doping. Another characterization is edX. In edX spectrum, the peak shows the presence of iron, sulfur, iron, sulfur, and bismuth in a grown crystal. This is a clear indication of presence of iron doping in crystals. Next characterization is a thermal analysis in the TGA. Figure shows the TGA spectrum of grown sample. The first stage of decomposition occurs at the temperature range 29.58 to 113.32 degrees Celsius, in which observed weight loss. 10.96% and calculated weight loss 11.20%. This weight loss is attributed to loss of H2H2O plus 2SO2. The second stage of decomposition occurs in the range 113.32 to 758.271 degrees Celsius, in which observed weight loss of 17.5%. 63% nearly agreed with the calculated weight loss, 17.78%. Here, observed weight loss appears to be 
less as compared with the calculated can be attributed due to the incomplete decomposition of bismuth trisulfide. This weight loss is attributed to loss of 4SO2 and decomposition is in a continuous manner. The remaining product finally turns into residue Fe Pi2O3 is confirmed at temperature 787.56 degrees Celsius. The absorbed residue rate was 71.402%, which is nearly good agreement with the calculated residual rate 71.31%. This confirms the presence of iron and bismuth in a grown crystals. These are the conclusions. Okay, uh, thank, uh, thanks uh, very much uh, for your presentation. So there are no questions. Uh, so the next oral presentation is uh, OP26 is absent. So OP27, OP27, um, uh, the presentation is, uh, I'm just sharing you, the OP27, uh, OP27. Introduction Synthesis Method, Co Precipitation Method and Combustion Method, Characterization, Result and Discussion, and lastly, Conclusion. So, in this paper, a single host phosphor for white light emitting diode, SR3 vapor by 2, docked with EU3 plus, prepared by Co Precipitation Method and Combustion Method. The formation of compound was confirmed by studying the X ray diffraction pattern, and photoluminescence properties were studied on the fluorescence spectrometer. The introduction, white light emitting diodes have been widely utilized, especially for solid state lighting and backlight of liquid crystal and also traffic signals. White light emission resulted from single phase phosphor compared to the combination of two or more phosphors expected to give high luminous efficiency because it reduces the probability of multi phosphor reabsorption of emission colors. In recent years, vanadates have been used in many high technological fields such as biological materials, electrochemistry, optical lasers, catalysis, and etc. Vanadates having self activated vanadates with the general formula that is M3 view core by 2 have been proved to be a good candidate for the luminescence host. This is, this is methods which are attempted here that are co precipitation method and combustion method. This is a flow charge by the co precipitation method. In this method, the precursors that are strontium nitrate and rare earth metal oxide were mixed together in which the dilute uh, nitric acid was added clockwise and the mixture was heated at 60 degrees centigrade on a hot plate. Then the aqueous solution of this mixture was obtained and this uh, solution, the ammonium vanadate was added dropwise and it stirred continuously and add some distilled water to this mixture. Then it is dried at 70 degrees centigrade on a hot plate brown colored powder was obtained and then this obtained powder was heated at 800 degrees centigrade for one hour and 950 degrees centigrade for two hours and then quenched to the room temperature. Finally, the white colored product was obtained. Then this is a flow chart for the combustion method. In this method, the precursors that are urea, strontium nitrate, ammonium vanadate, and also the rare earth material which are mixed together in a crucible and then add some double disturbed water to this mixture. Then it is kept on a hot plate at 90 degrees centigrade for half hour. And this uh, mixture was then kept in a preheated furnace at 900 degrees centigrade for four to five minutes. So that complete redox reaction was obtained and then annealed at the temperature of 950 degrees centigrade for two hours. Finally, the white colored product is obtained. Then characterization done here that are XRD and photoluminescence uh, properties. This figure shows XRD pattern of this product, which shows the uh, well confirmed uh, uh, with the acidity file with this uh, combustion method and co precipitation method. This is the PL excitation and emission spectra of this uh, strontium uh, vanadate doped with EU3. By the co precipitation method, the excitation is obtained at uh, the maximum intensity peak is at 350 nanometer in which the emission is obtained at 520 nanometer and 613 nanometer uh, sharp peak was obtained with the maximum intensity at the 0 0.002 mole of this rare earth material. Mm. This is the combustion um, uh, method. 
In which the PL excitation spectra is slightly changes but emission spectra is totally same. The excitation is obtained at 350 nanometer and emission is again obtained at 520 nanometer and with the sharp peak as 613 nanometer. And lastly, the conclusion, a series of this SR3VO4 by 2 U3 plus phosphor successfully synthesized by co-precipitation and combustion method. The XRD pattern uh, confirms the pure crystalline phase of this product. The photolimination spectra of this uh, product shows the potential application of the prepared phosphor in energy efficient solid state lighting, opto electronic devices, and organic composite solar cells. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, th thanks for it. Um, so uh, actually now we are not getting, uh, uh, taking any questions because we are already uh, late. So OP28, so we are starting with the uh, oral presentation OP28. So OP28, I'm just sharing it, OP28. Well, this is Dr. Nankari Mube. I am presenting before uh, uh, you at uh, the, the paper of the diaper uh, morphology characterization of gases above the substantial dependence outside the lab structures. So, when you Are being characterized by XRD, AFM, UV visible stem, as well as cyclic photometry, and the photoluminescence is also being carried out. The schematic is a synthetic uh, pathway of uh, strontium doped tungsten oxide and stretches. Uh, different synthetic condition is being used by using capping agents like CTABA and oxalic acid and uh, three, three normal sulfuric acid uh, and three normal SCL and uh, triethanolamine as a surfactant so precipitated and uh, disposed over the tungsten oxide and anode. This is the XRD pattern of uh, the blue O3 uh, monoclinic and uh, SR that we the one of the shift in the intense peak the zero to two confirming the uh, Transformation from the monoclinic to the thermal structure, and 25% uh, of the sample is being recorded for XRD. You can see the AF analysis done for 25% sample, and uh, when it's compared to pure sample, you can see many active sectors, uh, which is formed already uh, showing uh, the sensitivity of the surface. Uh, the uh, same microstructures of A, B, C, D, uh, which is uh, pure as well as 5, 10, and uh, 15, and 25 with a uh, percent of strontium and uh, the tungsten oxide kind of structures. Now you can see very clearly there is a lot of uh, porosity and agglomerations formed when uh, strontium is being disposed over the tungsten oxide and uh, structures. Cyclic photometry, uh, CV curves, comparison of redox potentials, increase in the redox potentials at the rate of uh, uh, minus 5.9 volt uh, when uh, as compared with the tungsten oxide nanostructures, with an increase in the band gap of 1.5 electron volt. UV visible spectroscopy, there is a uh, uh, the shift towards the higher uh, wavelength region. That is a red shift uh, as compared with the fewer tungsten oxide and 25 8 percent of uh, strontium to tungsten oxide. You can see uh, um, there is a shift in the 285 nanometer to 750 nanometer. XPS carried out uh, to uh, know the chemical composition of various elements present in the nanostructures. You can see confirming strontium and tungsten oxide. Uh, uh, 
the binding energies, carbon and oxygen binding energies. Photon emissions are also being carried up to for 25% of smoking due to current smoke and structures. There is a, uh, a wavelength shift of almost uh, 480 to 550 nanometers. You can see the response uh, of gases at operating temperatures uh, and the issue shows uh, uh, under the human flow form gas more sensitive towards the uh, nanostructures. You can see the uh, greater response uh, time uh, and uh, selection selection time. So in summary, uh, sizing support and smoke side, extraction group and smoke side was to synthesize by focus group and method. More project infrastructure and chemical operations of care as a box are and the inspectors could be techniques. The microstructure and resources that you were to the show the plate and is to the new family and the vegetation is being over. <coughs> the surface uh, roughness increases and XRD as spectrum shift in and uh, CD amber lines uh, 25 8 percent 750 nanometers. Uh, that is the input reading. Also, the 25 8 percent of consumed equipment smoke lines better efficiency of the gas compared with the uh, other uh, structures uh, with the response and the recovery time is almost 18 and 14 seconds. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, actually, due to the time limit, we are not uh, entertaining any questions because it may uh, cross the today's timing, I think. So uh, next uh, oral presentation is OP30, OP30, OP30. So, so I'm just now sharing it. Um, uh, just please wait for it. So OP30, OP30. So, okay. OP30. Present and discussion, conclusion, and references. Abstract. Electrovating phenomena has wide commercial applications, but to use this phenomena in commercial applications, the voltage requirement is very large. So, in order to reduce this voltage requirement, we have probed to reduce the thickness of the substrate. And this reduction in the thickness of the substrate has given us the desirable results. Here is a brief introduction to the topic. Nobel laureate Gabriel Lippmann first explained the electrovating phenomena. Electrovating is nothing but the change in the solid liquid contact angle due to the applied potential difference. Or we can say electrovating is nothing but the manipulation of the uh, liquid droplet due to the applied electric field. And contact angle is the angle made by the liquid with the solid surface. And here, the stability of the electrovating system depends upon the liquid, the surface, that is the substrate, and the voltage applied to it. Here is the experimental setup and theory. Sessile drop method is used to measure the angle. We have used two uh, substrates. First is Teflon tap or polytetrafluoroethylene membrane with a thickness of 0.13 millimeter. And the second one is the material is the same polytetrafluoroethylene membrane, but the thickness is 0.005 millimeter. Here is the, uh, in this figure, we can see the arrangement of the apparatus. Here, the, where this is the platform on which the substrate is placed. And on that substrate, a fine droplet of water is placed. These objective optics and CCD cameras are used to capture the images of the droplet. And here, the light which eliminates the droplet. Initially, when this drop is placed on the substrate, the images are taken and contact angle is taken out and then the voltage is applied. The same procedure is repeated for the second substrate with a thickness of 0.005 millimeter. Here is the schematic representation of that. This is just a schematic representation. The actual experimental setup is like this that we have used. This is the contact angle meter. This is the uh, power supply and this is temperature controlling unit. On this screen, we have captured the images. Now, a result on Teflon tape, that is the first substrate that we have used. At uh, zero volts, that when the voltage is not applied, the electric field is not at that time, the contact angle is found to be 123.30. And now, as we go on increasing the voltage, 
applied, the shape of the drop changes. And as a result, the contact angle also changes. The contact angle starts decreasing. And at maximum volts, it is the least contact angle. So the least contact angle on Teflon tap is found to be 74.71 degrees. And at 600 volts, this is the graph plotted. Second one is the result on thin polytetrafluoroethylene membrane. Here, the initial contact angle is found to be 105 degrees and the least contact angle is 60 degrees at 250 volts. So the, here, the voltage requirement has decreased. Now, these are the images that I have captured during the experiment at different volts. We can see the uh, change in the shapes as we go on increasing the voltage. So conclusion, we have taken two substrates with different thickness and from that we have plotted two graphs. From that graphs, we have concluded that the voltage requirement for the thin film, means the substrate having the thickness less, is less. Voltage requirement for that film is less as compared to the Teflon tech. So we can conclude that lesser is the thickness of the substrate, less is the voltage required. These are some of the references. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks so much. Uh, so we are uh, moving to the next uh, oral presentation. The oral presentation is OP31. OP31. Okay. So kindly note, it is OP31. So um, I'm just sharing it, uh, OP31. Share screen. Share. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Ms. Piritiwari. My oral presentation number is number 31. So the topic which I'll be presenting today is comparative studies on supercapacitive properties of RGO quantum sheets deposited on various substrates. I'm pursuing my PhD under Dr. Kulkarni at Institute of Science, Mumbai. So let's proceed. The outline of the talk here is background, highlights of the work, methodology, results, and discussion, and conclusion. So the background includes uh, supercapacitors, as you know, are new generation energy storage devices. Here, I have used RGO as the electrode material and it is deposited on two different substrates to study the comparison. The reason why I have used RGO here is because of its high surface area, excellent electrical conductivity, high, electric, high elasticity, mechanical strength and various other advantages. The highlights of the work is uh, RGO here is uh, prepared by a facile binder free hydrothermal root. So, by using hydrothermal uh, reaction, we have deposited RGO on nickel foam and carbon cloth at same conditions of concentration, reaction time and reaction temperature. Only substrate changes there to study the comparison between the two. All the other parameters are kept same. So, the after synthesis, the structural, morphological and electrochemical characterizations are done. From morphological studies, uh, it can be seen that uh, the surface area of RGO is greater as compared to that of RGO on carbon cloth. So the electrochemical studies in one molar KOH gives the capacitance of uh, RGO on nickel foam as 578 parat per gram, whereas that of RGO deposited on carbon cloth gives the specific capacitance of 249 parat per gram. So the difference can be noticed here itself. The methodology follows uh, these uh, steps. So first graphite powder converted to graphite oxide using modified Hummers method. Then graphite oxide converted to graphene through exfoliation in distilled water. Graphene oxide then through a hydrothermal technique is uh, converted to reduced graphene oxide and deposition is done on nickel foam as well as on carbon cloth at 180 degrees Celsius for 5 hours. After this, the electrode materials are dried at 60 degrees for 18 hours and then the ready electrode material is characterized using different characterization techniques. Moving on to results and discussion. In, in results part, XRD pattern, we can see that the 10 degree peak of graphite oxide is not present in RGO XRD pattern. And also, the what I can say, de spacing has increased, which proves that uh, GO has been separated to layers, which is which is uh, in the form of reduced graphite oxide. Moving on to same studies, from morphological studies, we can see different phases of graphite oxide, then graphene oxide, then reduced graphene oxide. Next series shows the deposition of RGO on nickel foam. There you can see a spherical microsphere kind of morphology seen from uh, which uh, I can say increases the surface area and so it increases the 
electrochemical, uh, what I can say, supercapacitive behavior. For carbon cloth, we can see crumbled sheet-like sheet -like morphology is there. Then these are the erratic pattern which show presence of carbon and oxygen, but on nickel form, some amount of nickel is also seen. Then these are the mapping patterns. So RGO, RGO on nickel form and RGO on carbon cloth. So green and blue color show here carbon and oxygen respectively, whereas for nickel form, a reddish color which represents nickel, presence of nickel. So elemental mapping and uh, morphological studies reveal that the material, RGO material has been perfectly deposited and no impurities are present. These are the supercapacitive studies, CD, GCD, specific capacitance comparison, and EIS plot for RGO on nickel form. Then these are the cap uh, supercapacitive property studies for RGO on carbon cloth. So you can see the area under the curve for RGO on nickel form is greater, so capacitance of obtained is greater. Then these are the cyclic stability comparison plots for both RGO on nickel form and RGO on carbon cloth. Conclusion, you can see weight deposited is 12 milligram, here it is 1.2 milligram. Morphology is microspheres for nickel foam. It is crumbled sheet like for carbon cloth. Efficiency is 75%, here efficiency is 50%. Cyclic stability for nickel foam RGO is 95%, whereas cyclic stability in this case is 50%. Energy density, power density, all the values can be seen here. So from this I can conclude that RGO grown on nickel foam might show better performance as compared to RGO grown on carbon cloth in one molar KOH. So KOH supports nickel foam performance, but it does not support performance on carbon cloth to that extent. So this was all about the studies which we have completed. Now for acknowledgement, we are thankful to DST and we are also thankful to Women Graduate Union for providing scholarship to me. Thank you for your patience and time. Thank you organizers for giving me this opportunity to present. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we are moving towards the next oral presentation. So this OP34, so OP31, uh, 32 and 33 are absent. Uh, okay, so we are moving to OP34. OP34, so I'm just sharing the screen. Uh, OP34, so okay, OP34. Good morning to all of you. Oral presentation number 34. Myself, Dr. Sunita Jadu. Here I represent my research paper, Size Selective Copper Molybdenum Oxide by Metallic Nanoparticles Synthesized by Electrochemical Production Method. This is the content of my presentation, that is introduction, experimental method, result and discussion, conclusion and references. Nowadays, nanotechnology is very popular due to its wide applications and that's why nanotechnology is called as the future of science. Nanotechnology is field of applied science whose theme is the control of matter on an atomic and molecular scale. At this level, the properties of matter are totally different from that of the bulk material. Nanometer is 1 billionth of meter, that is 10 to minus 9 meter. This is roughly 10 times the size of an individual atom. This chart shows relative sizes of cells and their components. The diameter of human hair is 100,000 nanometer wide, which gives an idea about how small is nanometer. These are the different types of nanomaterials, but we are going with the nanoparticle because it has high surface area, they show significant reduction in material uses, and they possess any properties that is different from bulk as well as molecules. They also lead mechanical, chemical, electrical, optical, magnetic, and magneto-optical properties, and they are highly reactive. Biometallic nanoparticles of noble metals are of high interest in imaging biomedical devices, including nanomedicine, and heterogeneous catalysis. A bimetallic nanoparticle is a combination of two different metals that exhibit several new and improved properties. Biometallic nanomaterials can be in the form of a light core shell or contact aggregates. They show improved activity as compared to their monometallic counterparts. They are cost effective, stable alternatives, and exhibit high activity and selectivity. These nanoparticles are synthesized by several methods. Some representative methods are shown here. Among all these methods, we used electrochemical reduction method because this method is very easy and have many advantages over the other ones. And this is a typical experimental setup, which is used for the 
electrochemical reduction method. This setup is connected to the potential stack, which supply constant current to the system. This is the schematic diagram for preparation of copper molybdenum nanoparticles by electrochemical reduction method. Here we use copper and molybdenum metal sheet as sacrificial anode and inert platinum metal sheet as cathode. The electrodes are placed one centimeter by one centimeter apart from each other. Acetonitrile and tetrahydrofuron in four as to one ratio is used as electrolyte. 0 0.01 molar tetrabutylamonium bromide is used as stabilizer. The reaction is carried out for two hours at 10 milliampere current density. After two hours, we get white red colored copper molybdenum colloidal particles. This Collateral particles settling for the one day. After settle, we wash it uh, with the tetrahydrofuron for two to three times and dried in a vacuum desiccators. The dried samples are used for the various characterizations. These are the advantages of electrochemical reduction methods. This is the Absorption spectra of copper molybdenum nanoparticles capped with tetrabutylamonium bromide. Here, the sharp peaks at 490 nanometer and 620 nanometer confirms the formation of copper and molybdenum nanoparticles. This is the FTI spectra of copper molybdenum bimetallic nanoparticles. The spectrum between 400 to 900 centimeter confirms the presence of copper molybdenum metals. In the XRD, the intense peaks and lattice parameter shows monocalic structure of copper and orthorhombic structure of molybdenum with particle size 10 nanometer, which is calculated by the Weiss-Kieler formula. To study the morphology of synthesized copper molybdenum bimetallic nanoparticles, we characterize it by the scanning electron microscope which shows homogeneous agglomeration of particles and they are irregular in shape. The elemental data clearly shows the formation of copper molybdenum oxide bimetallic nanoparticles. To know the exact morphology of bimetallic nanoparticles, we characterize it again tra transmission electron microscope. The TEM images shows mono dispersed copper molybdenum nanoparticles having spherical in shape with 5 to 10 nanometer average particle size. Lastly, we conclude that we have successfully prepared copper molybdenum nanoparticles by the electrochemical reduction methods. The quaternary ammonium salt, that is tetrabutyl ammonium bromide, used as capping agent, which have played a significant role in controlling the particle size. The powder XRD and HRT results show the synthesized copper molybdenum bimetallic nanoparticles are in 1 to 10 nanometer in range and spherical in shape. These are some references which are used for this study. And lastly, thank you. Thank you to uh, Thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Uh, so we are moving towards the next oral presentation. It is OP34. OP34. So uh, I'm just sharing it. Okay. So OP34. Uh, I'll just play it. So OP34, Dr. Ms. Sanalikar. Uh, it is just opening. Sorry, 35. OP34. Huh? Uh, wait, uh, I'm just uh, I'm just checking. Thirty four. Thirty four. So OP thirty five. So OP thirty five. Uh, I'm sharing it. Quantum confinement effect. Good morning. 
Good evening. I am Dr. Ramesh Samantha presenting our presentation on effect of pH on serum of human proteins and their conjugates with the biocompatible and the biocompatible quantum dots. This is how my plan of presentation. Due to three dimensional quantum confinement effect, semiconductor nanocrystals show distinct optical and electrical properties. Hence, they are used in many fields like optical, biological, and quantum computing. In particular, in biological field, they are used in the bioimaging technique, biosensors, diagnostics, and drug delivery, and therapeutic. However, most of the quantum dots are made up of heavy metal based elements like cadmium, zinc, mercury, and lead. These elements are carcinogenic and toxic to the living system. For example, here I have shown the release of cadmium ions and ion bar laden as quantum dots ions when they are treated with the A549 cells. The second figure is the confocal microscopic images of the cells which are treated with the quantum dots. As we can see, here cadmium ions are released more and they are affecting the cells as compared to the ion bar laden as quantum dots. Hence, in my study, I have used by compatible and greener IMP bar ZNS quantum dots. Uh, the IMP bar ZNS QD is as a safer and potential alternates to the heavy metal based quantum dots for BSA and HSA proteins. For the preparation of the samples, uh, first I have taken HSA and BSA in the two different PBS buffer solutions, which are at various pH values, and QDs, which are also at various pH values. Now they are mixed to form the bioconjugates. And such samples were further used for recording the force spectra with the help of the fluoromax 4 step. Here I have shown the schematic diagrams of BSA protein and INP bar pattern as quantum dots. BSA protein is the most abundant protein in the blood plasma. It contains high ubiquitous amino acids with molecular basis to cellular and it is an intrinsic fluorescent molecule. And the function of this one is carrier function, closing as an exogenous compound. From this study, we understand that the SP is contributing more fluorescence to the HSA and BSA proteins. First, I have studied the fluorescence intensities of quantum dots at various pH values. Quantum dots have shown different fluorescence intensities at different pH values. Quantum dots have maximum fluorescence intensity in the basic region that is at pH 9 and less fluorescence intensity at pH 3. And after 24 hours, there is a drastic reduction in the fluorescence intensities of quantum dots, which shows the stability of the quantum dots. This shows the fluorescence spectra of BSA protein prepared at various pH values. The fluorescence intensity of BSA protein increases as pH value increases from pH 3 to pH 7. And as well as there is a red shift in the emission maximum wavelength from 3 to 7. Further, if pH increases from 7 to 9, there is a reduction in the fluorescence intensity and blue shift in the peak position has been observed. Similarly, this spectra shows fluorescence intensity of HSA prepared at various pH values. Intensity has increased as pH increases from 3 to 7 and red shift in the peak position observed. Later, from pH 7 to 9, reduction in the fluorescence intensity and blue shift in the peak position was observed. Later, what we did, we mixed BSA and HSA proteins at various pH values with QD and recorded their fluorescence spectra. And we observed there is a drastic reduction in their fluorescence intensities as compared to the fewer BSA and HSA proteins. These two bar graphs corresponds to emission wavelength versus pH and gives the information of blue shift and red shift in the emission maximum wavelength of the BSA and HSA proteins. The results of this study are listed in these two tables for HSA and BSA protein. As I already said, there is a red shift in the peak position for pH 3 to 7 and blue shift in the peak position for 7 to 9 for both the proteins and conjugates. In brief, the overall summary is listed here. Quantum dots have shown higher stability and more fluorescence intensity at the pH of 7 to 9. HSA, BSA, and uh, their conjugates with QDs also shown more stability in the pH region 7 and 9. At last, I would like to thank Professor S. Sarinamdar and Professor L. S. Sarinamdar and Yusuf Karnadi. Thank you. Um, so, we are going to
uh, uh, op 36 op 36 okay i'm just sharing it to all of you op 36 op 36 so this is share okay mm -hmm. Chromism is a process that induces a change, often reversible in the colors of compound. There are several types of chromism. Electrochromism is a phenomenon which causes by reversing the electrical potential, which resulted in the color change phenomenon. Then this is the schematic diagram of electrochromic devices, and these are the some of the images which are the uh, in the potential application in industries as well as in the offices. Then the Ragon plot explains the various energy storage devices in comparison with the power density as well as energy density. Then based on the charge storage mechanism, supercapacitors are divided in the different types. Then the electrochromic devices has been adopted to incorporate energy storage which is recognized as electrochromic supercapacitors. This system will conserve the energy as a smart window and simultaneously it will store the charge as a supercapacitor. Then these are the experimental steps. Electrodepression was carried out to in order to deposit W3 thin film. Electrodepression W3 thin films were deposited at minus 15 volt for 20, 40, and 16 minutes each, and then annulled for 100 degrees Celsius for 16 minutes. Then electrochemical measurements were carried out in the electric system with the electrolyte of 0.5 molar lithium per unit with propylene carbonate. Then in order to study the electrodepression phenomena, cyclic voltammetry graph is shown here. Here, two reduction peaks were occurred, which can be attributed to the reduction of W6 plus ions to W5 plus ions and W5 plus ion to W4 plus ion. And also, two crossovers here are observed. The first crossover can be assigned to the starting uh, of nucleation process and the another crossover can be assigned to the overcrossing potential or the potential of a reversible ion reaction. Then these two reactions can be utilized for the explanation of electrodeposition mechanism. Then in order to uh, confirm the phase of W3 thin from the XRD was carried out from the diffraction peaks, it is clear that the W3 thin film is in an amorphous nation. The diffraction peaks recorded here can be assigned to the FPO peaks which compared with the CCP stars. Then in order to further carry, uh, further confirm the amorphous nature, the, strain, the stretching of WO bond at 952 Raman shape confirms the amorphous nature of W3 thin film. Then, uh, uniform nanogranular morphology was revealed through efficient images at different magnification. In order to study the electrochemical properties, cyclic voltammetry was carried out for each sample at different scan rate. Then, chronoamperiometry and chronocolumbometry was carried out to study the reversibility charge insertion as well as colored and bleaching state timing of W3 thin film for minus 1.2 voltage and plus 1.2 voltage for 15 seconds each, which gives the higher reversibility of 76.47 for W60 film. Then the impedance study was carried out in order to reveal the series the resistance and conductivity of W3 thin film. W60 thin film shows the lower series resistance which confirms the higher conductivity of thin films. Then the optical properties were carried out uh, of transmitters and transmitters using the colored state and bleached state of W3 thin films. Then these are the some images of W3 thin film that color stage. The optical density of uh, W60 was higher as compared to other top 1.66. Then the cell bleaching or cell uh, study bleaching study was carried out. After 72 hours, the films were bleached automatically in A. Then the results reveals that W60 thin film shows higher aerial capacitance of 39.18 millifarad per centimeter square volumetric capacitance of 180.91 millifarad per cube and the higher coloration efficiency of 157.84 uh, coulomb per centimeter square as well as the having reversibility of 76.47 which gives the potential application to formation of electrochromic devices which confirms the potential use and the conclusion is 
but the amas was w3 was synthesized by using w even to the person method xrd and ramon confirmed the amas was nature epicm reveals the uniform nanocrystalline morphology of w3 thin film and from electrochemical and optical study it is clear that w63 thin film shows the higher performance of capacity performance then this is charging after 72 hours in air then acknowledgement to shivaji university thank you uh, for the uh, presentation uh, so we are moving to the next presentation it is op37 op37 so i'm just uh, sharing it op37 sorry op37 op37 hello everyone myself pakush babar Research scholar Yashwant Rao Chauhan, Institute of Science, Sakha. I am doing my research under the guidance of Dr. P. N. Kanwar, Dr. Y. L. Kanwar, and Professor P. N. Kanwar. Topic of topic of my presentation is a hydrothermally prepared vanadium oxide for your know to gas sensing application. In present work, I have prepared vanadium pentoxide by using simple hydrothermal method, and the prepared material is. Characterized by various characterization techniques such as XRD, thermal spectroscopy, same, ARS, and even to be gas sensing performance calculated. And the results show good response. <laughs> In experimental section, the precursor used are ammonium metavanadate and oxalic acid. For only using to the double dish plot, the pH of prepared solution is a four, which is maintained by addition of two drops of Let's see. The method is a very is a hydrothermal method. The whole hydrothermal setup is placed in open furnace and kept at temperature one to two degrees Celsius for two hours. Two hours. We get the black uh, blue color solution with the black base, and this solution is filtered and annealed at three hundred degrees Celsius. Finally, we get the yellow colored material, which is a vanadium pentol. This is a Whole process of synthesis of vanadium pentoxide. The prepared material is characterized by various characterization techniques. First one is X-ray diffraction. X-ray pattern of prepared material is well matched with the JCPL scan number zero 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 four one one two six, and this shows that the crystal texture of prepared material is orthogonal. The latter's parameter is also calculated, and which is a A is equal to eleven point fifty three angstrom, B is equal to 3.57 angstrom, C is equal to 4.375 angstrom. The crystallized site is also calculated from by using the relation of division. Uh -huh. And this is a 49.2579. Second characterization technique is the scanning electron microscope. This is used for surface morphological study of the prepared material, and the result shows the aluminum retained nanostructure, which plays vital role. During gas sensing performance of analyte pentoxide, this is a Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectra of prepared material is well matched with the reported research paper. Raman peaks arising at different Raman shifts, such as a 287.56, and 992.93, are signatures peak of the prepared material, and this confirms the orthorhombic crystal texture of prepared material. Then equilibrium reflection spectroscopy. This is a useful for calculation of band gap, and band gap is calculated by using the Wilkins Monte theory. This result shows that the prepared material is a, have a direct band gap, and uh, absorption remains in uh, ultraviolet region. This is a Brunner Emmett Taylor characterization. That is a B. The curve shows the end to absorption. Into absorption, desorption, isotherm, and this curve is the VHS curve. If both curves are used for calculation of specific surface area and flow band, the specific surface area is a 4.3548 meters square per year. Flow band curve is a 52.69 meters. This is a which shows macro pore, and macro pore affects less in the diffusion of NO2 gas, NO2. At solid gas, this plays vital role in gases. Last one is a gas sensing. 
This is a gas sensitivity for cis time graph. This shows that the sensitivity of uh, prepared material, which is a uh, of high, and the sensitivity is a 30% or 100 ppm NO2 gas. This is a selectivity graph. This shows that uh, prepared material have the highest selectivity towards the NO2. This is a graph is calculation for recovery time and response time. And this response time and recovery time is a 8 seconds and 44 seconds, which is a good in comparison with other reported research papers. The working temperature for uh, this uh, uh, gas sensing is a 200 degrees Celsius. Overall performance of the uh, total vanadyl pent oxide shows good gas sensing performance. Thank you. Okay, uh, th thanks uh, so much for your talk. So we are moving towards the next uh, presentation, OP38. OP38, so I'm just sharing it, please wait. Uh, OP38. Uh, just wait for a moment. OP38. Good morning to all the dignitaries and participants from World 2 Nano World through the 6th International Conference on Advances in Material Science, ICAMS 2021, organized by Postgraduate Department of Physics and IPSC of Rajaramra Mahavidyalaya District Sangli. I am presenting here the research work green synthesis of gold nanoparticles and their optical characterization. Your introduction, it is demand to produce smaller, lighter, faster, and cheaper devices with greater functionality using less raw material and consuming the less energy. It is the need to develop rapid, fast, cost-effective and environmentally benign technique for the synthesis of metal nanoparticles. Here we are studying the most important optical property of the gold nanoparticles, that is the surface plasma resonance, which found the applications in most fields like electronics, medicine, agriculture, industries, etc. Now, surface plasma resonance is the collective in phase oscillations of free electrons of metal nanoparticles in emission with the frequency of incident light. SPR depends on size and shape of the nanoparticles, metal nanoparticles, and nature and composition of the dispersion medium. Now, surface plasma resonance can be classified into two types, localized surface plasma resonance and propagating surface plasma resonance here. Here, we have shown the photograph of the mushroom, which are found in rainy seasons on the sugarcane leaves, dried sugarcane leaves, Etc. Now then, how we have synthesized the gold nanoparticles? Here, we have prepared the mushroom filtrate, and that mushroom filtrate is challenged with the gold chloride solution. That is in equal proportion. And we have seen that the color changes from light yellow to reddish within 12 hours, and that indicates the synthesis of gold nanoparticles. Here we can show the effect of uh, various parameters on the color of the of these form gold nanoparticles that is on the surface plasma resonance of the gold nanoparticles. Here is the equal proportion, and here we have increases the concentration. Uh, sorry, proportion of uh, gold chloride solution, and that's we have seen here. The color changes from reddish to it's lightly to the pink, and that indicates there is increase in the size of. Here is also again we can show here. We can, in addition to it, we have added here the sodium hydroxide. That is to increase the pH of the solution. And color changes towards violet that again indicate the increase in the size of the form gold nanoparticle. Now UV visible absorption spectroscopy is suitable for confirmation of the form gold nanoparticle. And here we have seen that the SPR peak appeared at 518 nanometer, and that confirmed the formation of the gold nanoparticles. Here we have the single peak, 
and that indicates the form gold nanoparticles are uh, spherical in matter. Now here, FTI spectroscopy was done to find out the potential biomolecules which are present in the solution for the reduction and stability of gold. Now we have used a malware data sizer for determination of the size of the colloidal gold nanoparticles here. And here we have seen the size is found to be about 26.51 nanometer. To test the stability of the form gold nanoparticles, we have used the jitter potential measurement. And here we have found the jitter potential is negative one and it is about minus 20. Three millivolt that indicate the greater stability of the form gold nanoparticles. It provides the gold better or excellent stability even uh, at room temperature about six months or uh, 12 months there is no change in the color. And this indicates the um, gold nanoparticles are to be synthesized by the simple, reliable, and cost effective method here. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Uh, so we are moving towards the next presentation. It is OP39. Uh, it is OP39. Okay, I'm just sharing it. OP39. OK. Namaste. I am Dr. S. V. Gaikwad from the Department of Physics, M.A. Samasam Karwari College, Karwari, Pune. Now, I am presenting the paper in 6th International Conference on Advances in Material Science, organized by, organized by Postgraduate mm -hmm. Department of Physics, Rajay Ramra Mahavidyale, Zat. Now, my oral presentation number is OP39. The name of the paper is Corporative study of lead dropped copper nanoferrite by Solgen at a combustion method. This is the abstract of my paper where I have prepared the lead dropped copper nanoferrite by Solgen at a combustion method. So, that lead dropped copper nanoferrite method have number of applications in memory storage devices sensor, etc. Now, here, I prepared nanocrystalline composition PBX C1 minus X A2 per where X equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 synthesized through nitrate, citrate by soil gel at the combustion method from stoichiometric mixture of respective metal nitrate. The prepared powder were sintered at 400 degrees centigrade for 4 hours. The structural morphology Right formation of powder were characterized by X-ray diffraction, scan electron microscope. The X-ray revealed that the formation of nano-sized ferrite particles with cubic spherical structure and cubic phase in the ferrite matrix. The average crystalline particle size was calculated by Seren method. The crystalline size with PV concentration gradually increases. The lattice parameter, X-ray density, and bond length bond length as are calculated from the X-ray pattern, surface morphology studied by, studied by scanning electron microscopy. So in introduction, I have given the brief applications <laughs> for that nanoferrite in a number of applications that is the heterogeneous catalyst, absorption sensor, magnetic technologies, technologies, etc. This is my this is the introduction part. Now in X1 to X1 details, I have prepared that nanocrystalline uh, lead to upper copper ferrite by soil gel at a combustion method. So in soil gel at a combustion method, I used the X equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6. The raw materials were weighed according to the stoichiometric ratio and then dissolved separately in deionized water. pH is maintained C1 by adding ammonia in the water. After the solution was allowed for gel formation on the magnetic trail at 100 degrees centigrade at constant thermal, the dried gel was allowed to burn in a self-propagation combustion manner until whole gel was completely burned out 
we fully lose powder and that powder was used of center at 400 centigrade for 4 hours x-ray diffraction and ecm parameter was tested for that powder so this is the general reaction for the formation of nanoferrite this is general reaction here i will show the general reaction for the nanoferrite by using this diffraction we have calculated the size of the particle uh, lattice parameter and density by using that three formula t sin square theta and dx we can calculate the grain size uh, lattice parameter and density so we get three x ray pattern for 0 equal to 0 point tx equal to 0 point 2 this is x equal to 0 point 4 and this is x equal to 0 point 6 and they observe parameter for the three composition for pb 0 point 2 pb 0 point 4 and pb 0 point 6 the grain size was observed for increasing the x value the grain size was decreased 26 nanometer to 23 nanometer lattice parameter was increasing from 8.36 to 8.40 after grain x-ray density was decreased from 5.93 to 4.32 as from unit you see these are the ACM microgram for lead doppler copper ferrite for A equal to 0 0.2 and PB B equal to 0 0.6 and from that can above, above uh, these two parameters it is observed that the concentration of lead increases particle size found to be 26 to 23 nanometer and lattice parameter constant decreases the lead copper ferrite was of structure found to be body centered cubic as constant increases x-ray density decreases so these are the references of my papers so thank you very much for the organizers uh, thank you so much sir for the, uh, your presentation so we are moving towards the next oral presentation op40 op4040 op40 so i'll just start it op40 OP40. Okay. These are the content of my presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello everyone. Myself Anwar Goda, research scholar from Department of Physics, VSK University, Ballari, Karnataka State. Today, I am going to present my topic on synthesis, characterization, and the properties of single zinc ferrite nanoparticle by chemical co precipitation technique and its properties of These are the content of my presentation. Introduction Zinc ferrite with general formula MF2O4 has drawn attention due to their spinal structure. Spinal ferrites are the paramagnetic materials which show unique and interesting optical, electrical, magnetic and microwave properties. The nanoferrites have huge application. They are used as a magnetic carriers, electronic devices, they are used in catalysis, and also uh, biomedical applications of nanoferrites are they are used in magnetic resonance imaging, hyperthermia, and drug gene delivery, and etc. Synthesis of zinc ferrite nanoparticle. One is to be of zinc chloride and ferric chloride excited, they are dissolved in dehydrated water and stayed separately for 8 hours and mixed both the solutions and add reducing gadget NaOH a drop by drop to the metal oxide solutions get brown precipitation then it is filtered by filter, Wattman filter paper number 42 and precipitation is dried at 100 degrees Celsius for 8 hours and sintered at 900 degrees Celsius for 2 hours these are the photographs taken during the synthesis of gene current nanoparticles the exciting results show that the 318 plane indicates the spinal structure with FP3 space group. And also, we have calculated the particle size by device error method. The average particle size is about 30.93 nanometer. And also, we have calculated the lattice parameter A for the cubic structure, 8.443 and some, which is matches with the standard JSPDS values. 
and also we are determining the vessel size and the micro scale using williamson hall method and also we compare the with the debesh error method the particle size for debesh error method is 40.93 nanometer from wh plot 40.14 nanometer we obtain and also we are calculate the micro strain and dispersion density of the synthesized zinc ferrite nanoparticles the ftr results the absorption band v1 and v2 are located at 6.2 and 567 per centimeter the absorption band located within the specific region reduces the formation of single phase structure having two sublattice structure and octagonal sites same in ds results same results clearly shows that polyhedral shape of zinc ferrite nanoparticles and formation of grains is clearly observed in the image with varying size and also from media spectrum confirm that formation of ferric um, zinc ferrite nanoparticle and also uh, one is to two is confirmed as we are taken during the synthesis of zinc ferrite nanoparticles to be visible absorption the first exotonic peak is observed at 224 nanometer which is in uv region and also we are calculated the band gap using top plot uh, for direct and uh, indirect allo transition for direct allo transition energy gap is 5.45 electron volt and for indirect 4.82 electron volt these use uh, broad band gap such that these nanoparticles used in photo degradation applications fluorescence spectroscopy analysis uh, the strong emission peak were found at 367 nanometer which is in blue region and also we are calculated the recombination exciton recombination energy of value 3.37 electron volt so the emission is in the blue region so zinc ferrite nanoparticle may utilize for the blue led display applications conclusion from coat expression method we are successfully synthesized the zinc ferrite nanoparticle and uh, confirm the cubic spinel by xrd and presence of tetrahedral and octahedral site by ftr spectrum and sun image reveal that polyhedral structure of the zinc ferrite nanoparticle pds spectrum confirm the formation of zinc ferrite nanoparticle and also we are calculated the band gap from uv visible spectrum using plot uh, top plot this is acknowledgement we are acknowledged to the vgst of government of karnataka india and seed money project for us of usku and laser spectroscopy laboratory of music uh, karnataka university darwa and professor lokesh department of chemistry bellar thank you sir uh, thank you for your presentation uh, so we are moving towards the next uh, presentation op41 op41 so the next presentation is op41 so i will just share it op41 very good morning to everyone myself dr narayan ananta bigwega op41 department of chemistry gm with the college of science the raigad i am going to present a paper on extraction and spectrophotometric determination of cobalt 2 with four chloro isonitroso acetophenone semicarbazole the content of our today's talk is introduction procedure result and discussion and conclusion so first is we see the introduction solvent extraction is becoming more and more important in inorganic and analytic chemistry to separate the element of interest from substances which interfere with ultimate in quantitative analysis of element the solvent extraction process is very simple clean and rapid and convenient and because of it is used in industries technique is applicable for press attract press and large amount of the material oxide basically react with the metal to give color complexes and which can be extracted in organic solvent cobalt occurs in earth crust at about 223 ppm and sea water it is 0.1 ppm level and it is an essential nutrient 
Cobalt is extensively used in making high speed tools, high resistance, coalloys are used in jet engines, rocket nozzles, and the gas turbine. Then, uh, procedure for preparation of semi-carbazon derivative. So, preparation of N ml nitride, so 95 gram of sodium nitride in 370 ml of distilled water was taken in the flask having mechanical strain. Solution was cooled to zero degree. A solution of 25 ml of water, 34 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid, and 125 ml of N amyl alcohol was cooled to zero degree centigrade and then added. Mixture was allowed to stand for 90 minutes at zero degree centigrade and the upper layer of amyl nitrate have to be separated. The depression of four chloroisomatous or acetophenol. This is all 11.5 gram of sodium with 230 ml of uh, absolute alcohol and 58 ml of N-amyl nitride and 70.5 ml of chloroacetophenol. Allow to stand for two days in the refrigerator. Filter the solution. Then you have to prepare the uh, semi carbazon derivatives. Semi carbazon derivative was prepared by the mixtures of an acquired solution of semi carbide hydrochloride and acquired solution of potassium acetate. Solution mixture was kept for 30 minutes and give a semi carbazon derivative. So, this is the way you have to prepare all the synthesized the first complex. The result and discussion. Basically, the 4 chloroacetophenone semi carbazon form a yellow color complex with cobalt 2. Then you have to see about the pH effect on the complex. Extraction coefficient of cobalt increased with rise in the pH of the aqua solution. Then you have to select basically the organic solvent. So many organic solvents we have studied to determine the most suitable solvent for extractions and it's found it's a chloroform. Then effect of variation in concentration on the complex shows that one ml of 2% alcoholic of complex is sufficient to color development and extraction. The effect of variation on concentration on complex shows one ml of 2% alcoholic solution of HICA PPSC insufficient of color development and extraction of 10 microgram of cobalt. Calibration plot of absorbance against concentration of cobalt 2 gives a linear reproducible graph in the concentration range 0 0.2 to 0.8 microgram per ml of cobalt indicating beads law is obeyed in this range. Study of change in absorbance with variation in equilibration time for the extraction of cobalt show the equilibrium time of two minutes is sufficient for the quantitative extractions of cobalt two. The precision and accuracy of spectrophotic method have been tested by the analysis of seven solution, each containing five microgram of cobalt two in 10 ml of aqua solution. The mean of seven determination is found to be 4.97 microgram. And the standard deviation observed from the analysis of eight solution is 0.04 at a wavelength. Conclusion. The recent study was reversed that cobalt 2 can be separated from the number of metal ions by extraction with the complex in an organic solvent and the color of the organic extract can be measured directly for its photophotopic determination. It has a Pierce range from 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.06 microgram per ml can be applied to determination of cobalt in several real samples. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Um, so we are moving towards the next oral presentation. It is OP42, OP42, okay, OP42. So I'm just sharing it, OP42. Okay. Hello, uh, 
this is OK42, uh, Mr. Ketan Kumar Agaikwar, Assistant Professor, KJ Somaya College of Science and Commerce, Mumbai. I am a civil scholar working under Dr. K. K. Patankar, Composite Material Laboratory, Rajaram College, Kodnapur. And the topic of my presentation is mini review of comparative study between microwave center and conventional center in the Sintering is the process wherein the material is heated at a particular temperature so that internal interparticle bonding is generated due to atomic motions and particles. Typically, sintering uh, can be classified into two types that is microwave sintering and conventional sintering. In case of microwave sintering, the heat energy is supplied to the sample uh, using electromagnetic field of microwave. This electromagnetic field of microwave transfers the energy to the molecules of the sample and uh, this electromagnetic waves get reflected from the molecules and uh, incident on the another molecules in the sample and hence volumetric heating of the sample takes place. Because of this volumetric heating, sintering time is reduced. But in case of conventional sintering, the mode of transportation of heat energy to the material under consideration follows various paths like radiation, conduction, and convection. Because of this, it requires longer sintering time as compared to the microwave sintering. Here, uh, I have shown the pictorial representation of two methods, that is microwave sintering and conventional sintering. Here you can see in case of microwave sintering, the sample uh, is heated with the help of microwaves. This microwave incident on the sample, uh, the mo molecules of the sample absorb this microwave and hence there is transfer of electromagnetic field energy to the molecules. Within this volume of the sample, the microwave gets a multiple reflection and hence the entire sample gets heated in very short period of time as compared to the conventional sintering. In case of conventional sintering, the sample is heated with the help of radiation, convection and conduction. Because of this lengthy process, uh, the conventional sintering requires a longer time as compared to the microwave sintering. Here I have uh, compared the properties of microwave sintering spinal parites and conventional sintering spinal parites. The process of densification is accelerated in case of microwave sintering spinal parites, whereas in case of conventional sintering spinal parites, the process of densification is slower. Dielectric constant of the material, which is processed by microwave center, is lower as compared to the dielectric constant constant of the material, which is processed by conventional center sintering. Uh, Conventional sintering. Uh, also, it, it has been observed that co coercivity of spinal parite is decreased uh, as compared to the coercivity of the coercivity of the sample, which is conventional sintering. Uh, in case of uh, micro sintering spinal parite, it has been observed that the squareness of magnetic discharges loop of the material is enhanced uh, in comparison to the uh, uh, in comparison to the uh, conventional uh, center spinal parite. Uh, here we can see the advantages of uh, microwave center spinal parites over conventional center spinal parites. Microwave center spinal parites are best suitable for their uses in high frequency devices due to decreased rate of dielectric constants as compared to the conventional center spinal parite. Microwave sintering spinal parites find application in electric transformer because of decreased value of coercivity as compared to the conventional sintering spinal parites. Microwave sintering spinal parites can be used in magnetic memory devices as the squareness of microwave sintering spinal parites is found to be enhanced in comparison of uh, conventional sintering spinal parites. Uh, here are the conclusions. Brain size of microwave center spinal parites is larger than the conventional center spinal parites. Sintering time for microwave center spinal parites is comparatively less as compared to the conventional center spinal parites. Microstructure of spinal parites is more homogeneous as compared to the microwave center spinal parites. During the microwave sintering, the density densification curve of spinal parites 
is pressure towards the lower temperature due to enhanced diffusion mechanism. It has been observed that microbial sinkers can occur as by applications in uh, memory devices, electric transformer, high frequency devices because of power mentioned properties. And these are the references. Thank you. So we are moving towards the next uh, oral presentation, which is uh, OP43. OP43. Uh, OP43. So I'll just open it. OP43. Good afternoon to everyone. I am Vijay Kumar. Research scholar in Department of Physics, PSK University, Badari. My presentation concept is biogenic synthesis and characterization of zinc oxide nanoparticles from alloy barbadin smeller leaf extract. Well, we are all familiar with nanoparticles and its applications, which has reached milestone in recent science and technology because of its high performance over bulk materials. And it can be done with various methods like physical, chemical, and biological steps. So in my work, I preferred biological synthesis using aloe vera leaf extract, which is very rich in biomolecules and further act as phytochemical in synthesis process. Recently, metal oxide nanoparticles have been much focused in material science due to their unique optical, mechanical, electronic, and chemical properties. And among various metal oxide nanoparticles, zinc oxide is most demanding N-type versatile semiconductor, which have received intensive attention due to their wide band gap and large exit on binding energy along with that high power volume, large specific surface area, low toxicity and has good optical properties. Because of all these special characters, it is now preferred zinc oxide for our biological synthesis process. In biosynthesis, the plant extraction is the technique which separates active constituent present in the plants by using selective liquid solvent, which further act as phytochemical and can use in various applications. Here, we collected fresh aloe vera leaves and about 25 gram small pieces of sample leaves were mixed with 100 ml of double distilled water, which act as solvent here, and then boiled it for two hours on magnetic stirrer. Then the solution is filtered and kept it for further synthesis. On the other side, one normality of zinc chloride prepared in 100 ml of double distilled water and further leaf extract solution is added to the prepared mixture, drop wise till it achieves pH 7 which is supposed to obtain nanoparticle. After complete synthesis, the sample was characterized by spectroscopic techniques to determine its properties. So firstly, it was done with X-ray diffraction analysis for crystalline size. After then, UV visual spectroscopy analysis to determine band gap of synthesized nanoparticles. And Fourier transformer infrared spectrum analysis to evaluate different stretching vibration groups present in plant extract as well as also in synthesized nanoparticles. And scanning electron microscope analysis for morphology studies. After characterization, we got some interesting properties. So let me discuss the results of synthesized nanoparticles. Firstly, from X-ray diffraction pattern, we can observe here that strong diffraction peaks are obtained at different diffraction angle corresponding to the peak index. And all the peaks are compared with JCP desk data and confirm that synthesized nanoparticles are in hexagonal structure here. The narrow and sharp peaks here indicates synthesized sample is well crystalline. And the high intensity peak at 101 confirms the formation of zinc oxide nanoparticles and indicates an isotopic growth with preferred orientation of the crystallites. And further, the mean crystalline size of the particle was determined from de Bessel equation so that the average crystalline size of the synthesized particle is obtained. The average value of lattice points for obtained hexagonal structures are A is equal to 3 is equal to 5.29 angstrom with the C by ratio 1.678. The volume of unit cell is obtained to be 45.58 nanometer cube. And again, all these values are compared with JCPDS data. And finally, the dislocation density obtained to be here 40.7 into 10 to the power per nanometer square. From UV visible absorption spectra, we can observe here that the synthesized nanoparticle can exhibit exitonic absorption peak at 347 nanometer and reveals that it is optically active nanoparticle. And further, the energy band gap of synthesized nanoparticle is calculated by using Tox relationship, which is given by alpha h nu raised to n is equal to k into h nu minus eg. Therefore, 
the graph is plotted with respect to the above relationship and the very next one is fourier transformer infrared spectrum here from this spectrum we can observe here that different functional groups are present in synthesized nanoparticles and exactly at the peak 515 per centimeter indicates the presence of zinc oxide stretching vibration and confirms the formation of zinc oxide nanoparticles from scanning electron microscope result we can observe here that most of the synthesized nanoparticles are needle in shape with agglomeration and along with that ed spectrum confirms the presence of different elemental composition so here we can notice that zinc oxygen carbon aluminum and chlorine elements are present in the synthesized nanoparticles with all this result i would like to conclude that the synthesized nanoparticles are in hexagonal structure with crystalline size 16.8 nanometer and the optical energy band gap of the synthesized nanoparticles was found to be 3.5 electron volt and the formation of zinc oxide nanoparticles and the presence of other functional group which was confirmed by ftir measurements in addition eds analysis confirms the formation of zinc oxide nanoparticles with minor impurities further these nanoparticles shown good optical absorption property hence in future they can utilize as photocatalytic agent to develop biosensitive Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for your presentation so the next presentation is op45 <clears throat> so last uh, uh, eight presentations are remaining so please keep patience uh, so we we'll, uh, completed uh, so we have the next uh, oral presentation op45 op45 okay. hello everybody myself professor sandeep maruti hinge assistant professor rj college khatkopar mumbai my op number is 45 here i am presenting the oral presentation so my topic for oral presentation is the highly oriented growth of indium nitride thin films on quartz surface at relatively low temperature using plasma assisted prt now here i uh, initially i would like to uh, say that till the date people have used a various novel techniques to deposit a thin film of nitride materials the techniques such as mb techniques such as pld techniques such as ald techniques such as mocvd but here all techniques they use to grow the thin film of indium nitride at high temperature now here our claim is the growth can be done can be takes place at a comparatively low temperature so here so we confirm this growth with help of various nitration techniques so my entire work is based upon the indium nitride thin films on quartz substrate so let's move to the entire experimental work now here in experimental work we use a indium nitride metal indium nitride target Here, with purity of ninety nine point ninety nine percent. Now, this entire material is ablated with help of the KRF plasma. Ah, uh, sorry, KRF laser of wavelength two forty eight nanometer, energy density two joule per centimeter square, pulse duration nine nanosecond, repeat rate of five hertz. Now, the deposition takes place in presence of nitrogen plasma, which is generated with help of the RF power. Now, prior to the deposition. the quartz substrate were clean clear with suitable method and it is showered by the nitrogen uh, uh, gas and it is mounted on the substrate holder parallel to the target at 45 cm inside the deposition chamber the entire deposition chamber initially evacuated at pressure tends to minus 6 troughs with help of the uh, rotary and the turbo pump now next to that the uh, Uh, to pure nitrogen hydrogen mixture here yeah, 95 to 5 the 95% nitrogen 5% hydrogen is introduced at flow rate 20 ssm now this flow rate is maintained throughout the uh, process and then the deposition pressure actual pressure for the deposition is 20 millitor and here we have tried a deposition at different different temperature such as from room temperature to the 300 degrees ss temperature here we can go for higher temperature also but our claim is to, to confirm the growth at lower temperature this is entire experimental work 
Now next to experimental work, after preparing uh, indium nitride thin films, the films were characterized with help of the suitable uh, uh, characterization techniques such as the XRD. Now with help of the XRD, here we found that a highly single crystalline nature of the thin films, it was observed and the growth along the S plane only. The AFM image we have recorded to confirm the morphology, to identify the bonding environment and the structure modification. The Raman spectroscopy was recorded. Again, to study the elemental composition, we have taken a XPS spectra of indium nitride thin films. Now, with help of these suitable characterization techniques, here we finally conclude the AFM shows that is a effect of growth temperature on film morphology. That is, as uh, temperature increases, the crystallinity is also increased. So, with high temperature, the well crystalline film will observe. Now, next to that, then the X ray, Raman, XPS, the entire analysis technique shows the growth is highly oriented. So, here finally we can conclude that Indian nitride thin flames on amorphic substrates such as uh, the quartz here, where grow at very low temperature with help of some novel technique, which is nothing but a plasma assisted PLT. So here I am really thankful, the OP number 45, Sandeep Hinge, I am really thankful for uh, giving me chance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, so the next uh, presentation is OP46, OP46, okay. So I'm just sharing it, please wait, uh, OP46. Hmm. Hello everyone, my name is Swapnali Bhagwan Dhage and topic is synthesis and characterization of COSNO2 nanocomposite for CO gas sensing application. And the presentation number is 46. So let us start with the, what is meant by composite? Composite is nothing but the two different phases such as copper oxide and SNO2 and it is used in various fields that is catalysis, energy store, storage, sensing and the adsorption. So there are n number of techniques to prove composites in nanoform, uh, TGDTA, XRD, U visible, FTR, same, EDX and last one my application that is gas sensing. So let us start with the method of preparation. Here we use a co-precipitation method. The important is pH. We have to maintain the pH 9. So we'll get the precursor. So from first TGDTA, TG gives the weight loss that is 19.70. Whereas DTA gives the calcination temperature that is 600 degree Celsius. From XID, XID is used to determine the crystallographic structure and presence. So CO is monoclinic, whereas SNO2 is tetragonal. And crystalline size varies in between 8 to 24 nanometer. How? Because CO shows the crystalline size in between 8 to 9, whereas SNO2 shows in between 23 to 24. That's why here we have to note down the crystalline size of nanocomposite was in between 8 to 24 nanometer by using the base scalar equation. From visible spectra, we have to calculate band gap by using top lot. The band gap of composite is 2.63 electron volt, which is shows red shift. From FTR, we have to determine the functional group and we know that here our functional group is nothing but the metal oxide and metal oxide lies in between 400 to 750 centimeter inverse. Same shows morphology but image does not show the uniform particle shape and size because of co-precipitation method. EDX data shows 30.23% copper 38.46% tin and 31.31% oxygen by weight means EDX shows only the three elements present in composite that is tin, copper and oxygen. Now the main topic is my application 
and application is based on the adsorption theory so oxygen adsorb and the surface of metal oxide semiconductor induces the electron depleted surface region resulting in the increase in surface potential barrier and electrical resistance so here oxygen adsorb is in the form of o2 minus o minus and again o2 minus and it is varies in between 100 to 250 degree celsius now why pn junction is formed because we know that copper oxide is p type semiconductor whereas so2 is n type semiconductor so by using electron affinity and the one function work function it forms a fermi energy level and due to this heterojunction effect electrons being transfer from so2 to co and because of this interface it improving the gas sensing property now when whenever we plot a graph of resistance versus time and sensitivity versus operating temperature we'll get highest peak at 200 degree celsius for 100 ppm carbon monoxide gas and we calculate the gas sensitivity is nothing but 3.52 percentage so the sensitivity of sample is will decrease because of increasing operating temperature whenever we increase the temperature at the same time our sensitivity will be decreases this is my conclusion references and thank you uh, thank you ma'am for for the uh, uh, presentation so the next presentation is op 47 op47 um, i'm just sharing it please wait op47 op47 okay the sound is not coming or sound is not recorded my presentation number is op47 i said to dr pedimore department of physics ahmednagar college right now my presentation is special synthesis and electrochemical investigation of undoped and mn doped zdno electrodes for the energy storage uh, application second slide shows the flow chart of research work which i want to explain in the next slide the synthesis of zdno and mn zdno thin films zdno and mn zdno thin films were deposited using aqueous solutions of zinc nitrate and manganese chloride with the help of spray pyrolysis techniques for this deposition the optimized conditions were molarity of solutions was 0.1 molar temperature 673 kelvin flow rate of solution 5 ml per minute mn contain 3% 5% 7% mn doped in the zdno films this exa first figure shows exact pattern of pure zdno and mn doped zdno uh, mn doped zdno all peaks indicate the formation of high purity hexagonal zdno wurzeit crystal structure there are no extra peaks due to this mn metal or other oxides it is a means it is a single phase and mn2 plus might have been substituted zn site without change in crystal structure and figure b confirms shifting the predominant peaks toward the angle a lower angle as mn concentration goes on uh, increasing so that is constant and average crystal sites were calculated with the help of uh, xrds average crystal size goes on increasing as mn concentration goes on uh, decreasing this is a, a scm scanning electron microscope shows spherical nanoparticles type of morphology which could be able to afford superior uh, superior uh, surface area for redox in electrode next characteristics is the electrochemical studies first is a cyclic voltammetry this is the cv curve of the zdn o thin films or zdn o electrodes in 1 molar 2 molar and 3 molar and this is a common for 10 millivolt 
per second at the scanner. The potential window was used at minus 1.4 to 0.2 fold. And from this, we have calculated specific capacitance was calculated with the, with the help of this formula. And as concentration increased from one molar to three molar, at three molar concentration, the ZNO shows highest specific capacitance, 151 per uh, gram. This is the CV curves for this 3%, 5%, and 7% MN, uh, MN content in 3 molar KOH. And this 5% MN dope in ZNO exhibit higher specific capacitance, which is 361 Faraday per gram. This figure, next figure shows 5% MN tested. 1 molar, 2 molar, and 3 molars. And it shows the specific capacitance. 3 molar shows the specific capacitance, 361 Faraday per uh, gram. Next is charge discharge curves. This charge discharge curve shows symmetrical shape. Uh, it is for the only 5%, one in 1 molar, 2 molar, and 3 molar. All these uh, graphs or that uh, curve show the similar uh, shape. Next is specific capacitance was calculated from that charge discharge curve and some quantities, electro electrochemical parameters were calculated, energy densities, power densities, efficiencies with the help of these formulas and the values are listed in this uh, table. Most important property is the stability, stability of that uh, five percent Yemen uh, shown here, there is no obvious change in uh, shape takes place when this material is uh, more stable. We have tested around the up to the 300 cycles. Last is uh, electrochemical impedance. This electrochemical impedance semicircle is obtained at high frequency region and straight line in the low region of frequency. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for uh, your presentation. Uh, so we are moving towards the next OP48. OP48 is the uh, next presentation. Uh, OP48, so sir, skin, OP48. Okay. Thank you. Start. Zero for shape. Welcome to all the dignitaries for my oral presentation, OP48. Here I am going to present my work on the catalytic role of acidic ionic liquid for the synthesis of base humanine derivatives at room temperature. In a work, we have synthesized SO3H functionalized acidic ionic liquid and immobilized it over a natural solid support obtained from hostile plant ash which is a Lewis acidic in nature with high silica content. We have used this dual acidic heterogeneous catalytic system for the synthesis of dystumarin derivative. We have studied the synthesized catalytic system by FDR analysis and semi-DS analysis, while obtained products were characterized by H1 NMR, C13 NMR, and LCMS. This is a dystumarin derivative different applications of this humarine derivatives. Here we are studying previously reported catalytic system which are used for the synthesis of this humarine derivatives. Nowadays, ionic liquids are widely attracted in the field of catalysis due to these properties. Present work, we have synthesized 1 methyl 3 4 sulfobutene imidazolium chloride ionic liquid using 1 methyl imidazole and 1 4 butane sultone which under reflux condition and further reacting with concentrated HCl gives respected ionic. Our second objective of work is to immobilize this acidic ionic liquid over naturally occurring solid support that is hostile plant ash which is itself act as a Lewis acid. We have used this dual acidic heterogeneous catalytic system for the synthesis of this tumorin derivative where aromatic LDA reacts with two moles of 4-hydroxy tumorin 
by using ethanol as a solvent at room temperature. In order to check the optimization of reaction, we have to select the reaction in between benzaldehyde and 4 hydroxy cumarin and carried out using different solvent, different temperature, and different concentration. Of After selecting the optimized condition, this is nothing but the use of 10 mg of catalytic system using ethanol as a solvent at room temperature. We enlarge our vision and synthesize different derivatives of this cumarin. As immobilized ionic liquids are well known for their reusability, we have recovered the catalytic system after completion of the reaction and further used for the fifth cycle, which is without significant loss in catalytic efficiency. So the plausible mechanism of the given reaction for the synthesis of bismarine, the synthesis is processed through the Novengel condensation which is take place through micro addition and the intermediate obtain undergoes intramolecular rearrangement for synthesize the bismarine. Here we have carried out this characterization. This morphology of the catalytic system was confirmed by cell while the high concentration of silica in catalytic system was confirmed by the EDS analysis. In case of FTR analysis, Broadband obtained at 3464 is due to the stretching vibration of SiOH, while which is obtained at 1090 is due to the asymmetric vibration of structural siloxane. The presence of CS stretching of ionic liquid is confirmed from the stretching vibration of 1644. In case of NMR, we got a broad peak for hydroxy group at 10 ppm, while the aromatic proton gives signal in between 7 to 8 ppm. So C13 NMR, carbon attached to hydroxy group gives peak at 166, while carbonyl group gives at a 165. This confirms the structure of synthesis. The LCMS spectra gives Purification of the bismarine derivative, that is nothing but the 99.9%. Moving towards the conclusion, we have synthesized SO3H functionalized acidic ionic liquid, which is immobilized over acidic solid support for statement ash. Due to its dual acidic nature, it acts as an efficient catalytic system for synthesis of bismarine derivative. This is about the acknowledgement. And Thank you so much, ma'am, for the presentation. So we have last four uh, presentation left. So starting OP uh, 50, OP 50, OP 50 presentation. So I'm just starting it. Uh, okay, OP 50. OP 50, Vaishali Patel. Title of research paper is Comparative Antimicrobial Activity of Biometallic Nanoparticles and Monometallic Nanoparticles under the guidance of Dr. Shobha Ajit Vagmode from Department of Chemistry, MES Abbasaheb Garware College, Pune. In this research, study of comparison of between monometallic and biometallic nanoparticles with antibiotics such as amoxicillin on few MDR, that is multi-drug resistance, is done. Multi-drug resistance is antimicrobial resistance shown by a species of microorganisms to antimicrobial drugs. First, using green method, monometallic like copper, silver, nickel, and biometallic like copper, nickel, AGNI, were synthesized using bitter leaf extract. On 6 to 7 MDR pathogens such as E. coli, S. pneumonia, K. pneumonia, etc., antimicrobial activity is carried out using same mono and bimetallic nanoparticles which result in 
in better efficiency for bimetallic nanoparticles. For the same, characterization, characterization was done by using UV visible and TM analysis. Conclusion Biometallic nanoparticles gives better antimicrobial activity for mentioned MDRs than monometallic nanoparticles. Thank you. Have peace. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for your um, nice presentation. Uh, actually, the voice was very good. Uh, OP, uh, so we are moving towards the OP51. OP51. So I'm just sharing it. OP51. OP51. Morning, myself, Pakadi Manikarjan Zatatri. Today we'll discuss on the paper Liquid of the Sodium Ethylate Thick Film and Epicent Ethanol Sensor. Zolite is a, a these are the outlines of the lectures of the introduction. In that uh, introduction, the zolite is a porous material. There are the different pores are there. There are the properties are the uh, adsorption properties, ionization properties, and the reversible water dissociation properties. Have a different property. That's why this zolite material uh, due to high porosity. That's why we have given the material for the case. Okay, and that is what we can characterize by the XRD, EGTA, and now the, uh, the we given that uh, the zolite material, we make a thick film, and uh, with the help of the screen printing, we uh, made the thick films. The sodium is zolite is functional material, and other material, the binders, they are mixing, and uh, they made a film, and then this film can be fired at 100 degrees in cell height at home, yeah, using that sensing unit. When, that, the, the, when the operating temp uh, temperature is increasing, with the help of the temperature, we can measure the resistance and we in inject the gas and again the ma uh, measure the uh, uh, sensing characteristics. And this is the domestic use uh, made of uh, uh, gas sensor unit. The characterization, the, uh, this uh, the film is characterized by XRD with the uh, the lambda wavelength is the 1.54 angstrom unit and the uh, 220 degree, 80 degree can uh, do data value. Uh, then uh, EGTTA, 400 degree Celsius to 800 degree Celsius, the mind the different phases and uh, thermal properties. And uh, the FTIR is the scanning rate is uh, 400 to 4000 centimeter density. Now the result discussion, there are the X-ray diffraction method, there are the different peaks we have obtained the X-ray diffraction method. These peaks are the XRD peak of the uh, sodium zolite material and one, uh, there are 40 and uh, 55 and 70 degree peaks, they are peak arch of the Nikkei peak. Uh, these are the Nikkei endopoda. And that's the zolite material. These are the and with the help of that, uh, we also calculate the grain size. This thermal gravimetric analysis this is the thermal uh, peak, and this peak, the weight loss is uh, 22, uh, 2.5 weight percent. And uh, this, uh, the black line, is uh, nearly 20, 200 degrees Celsius. They are the decreasing, and after that, they are the straight line because this is uh, called as the uh, weight loss of the material because the water molecule and other molecule can be evaporated. And this picture shows the uh, exothermic reactions, okay, the DTAP, and these are the FTIR, they are the different functional group can be obtained. This is the sensing study of the main study of the experiment in the sensing study that can operate in temperature. There is a, uh, this operating temperature is only 50 degrees in case of temperature. And we, the, this is the this graph shows that the response and recovery time there will be and uh, very quick response and recovery time that very good for the characteristics. And this is the uh, saturation in at 800 ppm. Now the conclusion of that is that, that we can uh, may uh, can, uh, make the film with the help of the screen printing technique and uh, X-ray diffraction pattern which matches that JCBD data. 
equal to put sodium isolate is stable material thermally stable material weight loss is 22.5 percent and that uh, the different functional group can be obtained the operating temperatures in this case this compliant recovery time is very good and uh, the, the concentration is 80 ppm is the uh, the efficient is an sensor other gas sensor material thank you uh, thank you sir uh, for your um, nice talk uh, so we are moving to the second last op52 uh, this is the second last um, presentation just i am uh, sharing it okay so this is the op52 op52 okay. good morning to everyone my name is Umesh Nugun. I am working as assistant professor in KRC College Bangalore. My OP number is 52. So I work on Fe and Zn nanoparticles for photocatalytic degradation of methyl orange. This is the abstract of my work. The water is polluted by the so many organic molecules from industry and agriculture sector. So brominated phenols and chlorinated hydrocarbons are the most waste material centering into the water. So advanced oxygen process is one of the simple methods we are using to degrade the organic molecules. So my work is zinc oxide and dope zinc oxide for the photocatalytic degradation process. This is the structure of methyl RN. So the nanoparticles are prepared by the co-precipitation method by using zinc nitrate and iron nitrate. The photocatalyst is prepared by the co-precipitation method. The particles are heated and worn at 120 degrees for three hours to get the zinc oxide nanoparticles. This slide shows the, uh, the prepared nanoparticles is having the, the nano size of 40 nm. The undoped zinc oxide nanoparticle, it shows you only one highest peak at 40. So this is calculated with the help of the, the two theta into 100 mark. 10 minus 90. Based on that formula, it is prepared and it shows the hexagonal urge like structure. This is an XRD pattern of a 2% doped iron with zinc oxide. The doped, doped and doped have the same structure, meaning the difference is not observed. The same, the same position, peak is observed. It shows that so doped structure also having the, the urge like hexagonal urge like structure. It is the, the same image of the zinc oxide nanoparticles. It is having the egg-shaped uh, structure and it is spread toward the, the crystal lattices and it is having the egg-shaped structure. It is the same image of the 2% doped iron in a zinc oxide particle. The needle shape structure shows the presence of iron in a zinc oxide nanoparticles. So this slide shows the, the protocatalytic degradation of a methyl orange at a pH 4. The different peaks are observing here. The FeZNO, the particles acting as a catalyst, more degradation takes place. So highest peak it shows compared to UV, UV, ZNO and uh, only ZNO. But the 2% FE ZNO has, the, has more efficiency in the photocatalytic degradation process. The 2% FE ZNO photocatalytic doses shows the, the photocatalytic degradation of methyl arrange. As the amount of catalyst increases, the degradation process increases and reaches the maximum optimum range at 0 0.1 gram. After that one, it goes on a decrease. It reaches the maximum, then it uh, upwards uh, it decreases. So maximum activity it shows at 0 0.1 gram per liter. This graph shows the influence of methyl orange, the amount of methyl orange. So rate was rate degradation rate was examined with keeping the constant photocatalyst amount 0.1 gram per liter. So it uh, first uh, increase degradation rate increases and reaches the maximum afterwards 
it declined as the methyl orange quantity increased 2, part, 2 into 10 raised to minus 2 mole per dm cube is the limiting value afterwards of the degradation rate constant decreases. The chemical precipitation method was used to prepare the pure ZNO and FeZNO nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. The exact pattern and SEM topography shows that prepared nanoparticles have wood structure. The average particle size 2% to 25 to 40 nanometer. Exhibited excellent achieve photocatalytic degradation of methyl arranging the acidic condition of pH equal to 4. It was found that 2% FeZNO shows the highest activity for degradation of methyl arrange compared to ZNO4. The following are the, the references I made for the, my work. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you sir. Uh, so uh, participants, uh, please see the uh, um, chat box. Uh, I'm sharing the feedback link and we are going to the last uh, oral presentation, uh, OP55, OP55. So uh, I'm just sharing it uh, and also please see the chat box. I have shared the uh, uh, feedback link. Okay. Uh, so last presentation, OP55. Hello everyone. I'm Vuresh B. Karipetti presenting a research paper on stand properties of ugly acrylic slag concrete cured at ambient temperature. First of all, we'll understand what is ugly acrylic slag concrete. Uh, it is actually uh, in the need of, in response of a beginner concrete, because one ton of cement produces equal carbon dioxide. So uh, this concrete can replace totally over ordinary Portland cement concrete. But again, it has some good properties. It is uh, rich in mainly the silica and alumina content as a source material. And it is rich in uh, early green of the compressive system and uh, low green, good uh, acid, resi acid resistance and the low shrinkage also. So when it comes to the research part, so I have considered these materials and the specimen sizes. And you can see here, we are not considered any cement and the water. And when it comes to the proposed, proposed methodology, so we did so many trial mixes. And after that, we got the optimum mixes for M30, M50 and M70. And we conducted the mechanical properties on these optimum mixes by considering the different variables and conducted different tests. And this is the mix design for different grades uh, as per the previous literature as and the trial mixes. And uh, I carried out to the trial two trial mixes. This is the first trial mix details. In this, we have considered the different molarity of any which eight molarity, ten molarity, and twelve molarity. And uh, this is this is the uh, table one shows the results of the trial mix one when we add. Uh, the solution, sodium hydroxide and sodium silicate, one day before the casting of the specimens. And this figure one shows the relationship between the binder ratio and the composition strength at, for both ambient and the heat one cured cubes at three days. And this is the, the results of the same trial mix when we add the sodium hydroxide sodium silicate on the day of casting. And this shows the relation between the consistent and the binder ratio again for the ambient and the heat one cured at the three days. So here the heat one cured samples are giving more results than the ambient cured. So this is the details of the trial we considered extra as the super processor. So which is in, in terms of 1.5 percentage and 2 percentage by the volume of the binder. So this table number three shows when we add the super processor 1.5 percentage by volume of the binder and these are the results. And this figure shows uh, the relation, relationship between the binder ratio and composite strength of the trial mix two with 1.5 percent is super processor. So here we can see the seven days uh, strengths are obviously more than the three days. So we have to identify how much it is more. And this figure shows the relationship between the split tensile strength and the binder ratio. Uh, here uh, we have seen that the normal the split tensile strength of the normal concrete is more than the ultra acute slag concrete. So how much, is, how much it is more, we'll see in the conclusion part. And this is the relation between the flexure strength and the binder ratio. Again, here also the normal concrete gives the more flexure strength than the ultra electric slab concrete. So these are the results of the same trial mix too, when we use the super processor as two percentage. And this figure shows uh, the flexure strength and the binder ratio of the trial mix too. Uh, with two percentage of the super processor. So here also the normal concrete gives more flexures than that 
the GPC. So by observing all these graphs and the tables, we can conclude that. So first of all, the general common conclusion is the slag and the flyers can replace the OPC, that is ordinary potent cement in concrete, which can reduce the CO2 content, which can be released from the cement factories. The second one, the complete strength of the ambient cured samples with Taiwan solution prepared 24 hours pre hour casting are 70%, 32%, and 23% more than the samples with alkaline solution prepared on the day of the casting for M30, M50, and M70, respectively. Again, the uh, composition strength of the heat one cured samples are 20%, 4%, and 2% more than ambient cured samples at three days for M30, M50. Split tensile strength of the conventional cement concrete samples are 7.3 percentage, 25 percentage, and 31 percentage more than the alkali acrid slag concrete samples at seven days with two percentage of SV again for the same mixes. The flexor strength of the conventional concrete are 323.5 percentage, 26 percentage, and 30 percentage more than the alkali acrid slag concrete samples at seven days for the same uh, grades of the concrete. So these are the references what I consider for the research work. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you so much, participants. Uh, uh, we have uh, done with uh, today's session. Tomorrow, uh, the session will start at 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so please uh, try to join at uh, 9 a.m. So uh, tomorrow's session will start at 9 o'clock. Uh, 9 to 10, uh, we have the oral session. And again, 10 to 12 we will have the uh, invited talk and again the oral sessions okay thank you so much